What's going on, Tracy? How you doing? Rise, what's up? Just give it a couple of minutes, you guys. What's going on, Jared? Give it a couple of minutes, you guys, then we'll talk. Just wait for a couple of people to get in here. Hopefully everyone's doing well tonight. Um, we're going to be talking about some interesting stuff as it is. If you guys want to, um, as we build this up, if you guys want to share this video as it is, or this live to other people, because I'm trying to bring futurists in here. And it almost seems like no one wants to get this. They, they, they don't want to understand this, how important this is, that Jesus already returned. Absolutely, Jared. Absolutely. Thing is, it's just, it's, it's mind-blown to me. But how can you, how can you understand the New Testament if you don't understand the Old? It's not possible. It's not possible to understand it because the New Testament, of the 404 verses in the New Testament, or in, in the book of Revelation, sorry, 278 of them are allusions back to the Old Testament. What's going on, Hidden in Plain Sight? How you doing, man? Hope all is well. Give it a couple of minutes. Baffles my mind. Really baffles my mind. It really does. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, Mr. Super Cool. The problem is with your idea about how Jesus returns. Absolutely hit in plain sight. What's going on, Joshua? How you doing, man? We're going to give it a couple of minutes. Mr. Supercool, your problem is how Jesus returns. Does he return physically or spiritually? You see, this is what it comes down to. Because he made it clear to the religious leaders that his kingdom was not of this world, and it doesn't come with careful observation. Okay? We're going to give it a couple of minutes, and I'm going to bring people in here. I, uh, I, I really want to bring people in here because I think this is important, especially in the sense because you got a lot of keyboard warriors out there. You, you got a lot of people out there that just like to run their mouth over a two to three minute video, but they never show up in the lives. They never do. They never want to talk these things out because they're too scared to be wrong. That's the problem. They're so convicted in their beliefs that they never even want to look at what the truth could be. And it's a serious problem. Hey, what's going on? How you doing, Poofy? I'm going to give them time to show up. Absolutely. None of them ever seem to want to show up. But the guy last week... He was arguing with me for the first 45 minutes while we were talking. And finally, in the last 15 minutes, he was like, oh, yeah, no, I, that, that makes a lot of sense what you just said. I don't I don't get on here because I need it. I get on here because a lot of other people need it. And they just. Yeah, I. I'm I, I'm gonna get back on with Christy again sometime. She just Christy basically just said, "Oh, I can't really say anything against yours, but it sounds a lot like mythology." 
Well, the thing is, a lot of Christianity, here, here's the thing that people don't realize. Did you know that the tabernacle of the Old Testament is actually created or based off of the temple of Heliopolis in Egypt? Yeah. Did you know that the priesthood, the same stones that they wear is what the Egyptians wore of the Pharaoh? Yeah. Did you know that the word Phoenicians comes from the word Phoenix, which actually has to do with the temple of Heliopolis and the great Phoenix? You see, the thing is, the problem with people is that they don't understand Christianity is nothing new. Christianity actually goes back to Egypt. You see, what ended up happening is it's it's just crazy. It really is because... Jesus has returned, my friend. Um, he'll return on the clouds one day. You better go read Revelation chapter 1, verse 7, and line that up with Zechariah chapter 14. You cannot, I repeat, you cannot take verses from the New Testament and try to say, oh yeah, this, this makes sense right here. I'll, I'll go ahead and look at this without lining them up with the, the Old Testament. You have to line everything up with the Old Testament. And the thing is, People don't seem to want to do this. So today, I am inviting anyone that wants to come in here to tell me why they believe Jesus is yet to return. It's not that the physical Jesus is yet to return, okay? So, yes, the thing is, the problem is you're looking for him on actual physical clouds, when Jesus told you his kingdom wasn't of this world, he said, my kingdom does not come with careful observation. He told Pontius Pilate, Pontius Pilate asked him, he was like, you're a king, aren't you? He's like, you say I am, but my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom was of this world, my people would fight on my own behalf. That's John 18, 36. So here's the thing, with everything that's going on, we have been lied to. We have been deceived. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The The thing is, warrior for Christ, Joshua, The I think the whole Jewish narrative today is being played out. If you want the truth, look at Egypt. If you really want the truth about everything, about how these weren't just shepherds out in a field just tending their flock, but this was actually the Hyksos pharaohs or the Hyksos shepherds, or the shepherd kings that we are talking about? Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the patriarchs, they were wealthy men. These were wealthy men. According to Josephus, he said that Abraham didn't have 300 servants at his command to go into the Valley of Slaughter to rescue Lot. He said he had 318 officers at his command. You know what that would mean if he had 318 officers at his command? That would mean he would have 30,000 soldiers under his own command. This is Abraham. And if Abraham had 30,000 soldiers under his command, that means there's only one person that could have that type of power within that era. And that was the Egyptian pharaohs. Okay? There's a lot that we are not told. There's a lot that we do not realize, we do not understand, because they have hid it from us. Christianity originates in Egypt. The words that we get from Hebrew actually have Egyptian origins. A lot of the words that we have, such as the word Phoenicians. Phoenicians comes from the word Phoenix. Phoenix was actually the animal or the symbol they set up at the temple of Heliopolis. It's all hidden. Yo, what's up? Hey, what's going on, Will? How you doing, man? Uh, pretty good. It's about that time of night where I start debating people and my blood starts rising. <laughs> okay. All right. So let, let me ask you, do you believe Jesus is yet to return? Do I believe he's coming for the second time? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. All right. So how, let, let me ask you this, Will. Where, where are you from? Uh, how long have you been studying scripture? Um, are you a part of a denomination? What's going on? I am 26 years old. I'm from North Carolina, and I grew up Christian, but I didn't really understand any of it until I went to college, fell away from the faith, and then came back. And so I guess I would say like a year. like uh, No, not a year. Probably like two or three years. Okay, so, so you've been studying for about two, three years? Yeah. 
Okay. All right. So, um, here's, here's for, first off what I want to say. Um, okay. So, so you believe Jesus is returning. What verses, uh, do, do you want to look at? Let, let me ask you that. Uh, I mean, we can look at the book of revelation if you want to. You certainly can. Okay. Let's start there and we'll go from there. Okay. Okay. All right, All right, let me pull it up right now while you look up whatever you got to look up. Okay, I, I, I don't need to look up anything. I, I got my Bible right now. Um, matter, uh, yeah, we'll we'll talk. That, that's fine. It's fine. We'll, we'll talk, man. So you've been studying a couple of years. All right. You went to seminary school? No, 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 no. I'm just a normal dude. You're just a normal guy. Okay, so you've been studying about two, three? I would actually love to do that, though. No, dude, no, no, you want it. Why do you say that? Seminary skill, it, school is actually built upon the foundation of what they want to teach the people. They, it, it's, it's basically built upon a deception. This is why you have men like David Jeremiah, John MacArthur, different, John Hagee. They have all these parishers and, and all these people that follow them because they make this big money. It's all scam, okay? Seminary school is a scam as well. Because the thing is, you can learn all these things through the Bible, and it says specifically in the Bible that the Holy Spirit is your, your teacher. Okay. okay. I agree. Yeah, I would I would agree that it's definitely not required to go to seminary school to be a um, pastor or preacher or teacher. I would just go Absolutely. strictly, and maybe not even seminary school, just like, I guess, what would you call it? Just biblical studies or something? I, yeah, I, I, I guess you could say biblical studies. Yeah. Um, the main thing, what, what I would say in order to understand the New Testament, you have to understand the Old Testament. Okay. I agree. You, you have <laughs> to understand the Old Testament because the Old Testament, a lot of the language that is used is a lot of the language that comes from the book of Revelation. So yeah. out of the 404 verses that are in the book of Revelation, 278 of them allude back to Old Testament imagery. So okay, I agree with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so um, basically, where, where where do you want to start tonight? I, I I have a while. We can we can go over this. Um, let's just come together and reason. All right. Okay. I believe. Um, let's start here. I believe that Jesus. 100% is going to return for the second time, and we can just start at the defeat of Satan. Do you care if I read this a little bit? Just like a couple Absolutely. of minutes? Absolutely. That, that's fine. Okay. And when the thousand years are ended, which we've all been taught is the millennial reign. Yes, I know that some people believe it comes at different times, but millennial reign. And yep. when the thousand years are ended, Satan will be released from his prison and will come out to deceive the nations that are at the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them for battle. Just on this account alone i feel like it hasn't happened yet okay so, all right you all right dude you're, you're you're right on the money with this okay i'm, I'm gonna tell you why because when uh, it, it was about three to four years into my studying i turned into a partial preterist okay because um i basically believe that a lot of everything was fulfilled except the gaga magog war um the defeat of satan I don't um, think that's been told yet. Okay. All right. So th this may not change your mind tonight, but I, I can throw you in a direction. I've been studying about eight, eight to ten years now, but okay. I'm 29. I, I've been I started studying when I was about 22, and um, I started studying the Bible about eight to ten hours a day, every single day since, pretty much, and. Basically, what I can tell you this is that the Gog of Magog War that it talks about in Revelation 20, this is actually talking about Ezekiel 38 and 39, okay? Ezekiel 38 and 39 says that this will happen in the last days, okay? And when it's talking about it's going to happen in the last days, Hebrews chapter 1 verse 2 tells you that God sent his son Jesus in the last days okay oh hold on, hold on. what'd you say hebrews chapter 1 verse 2. okay keep going 
Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 and 2 actually says that the prophets were spoken to impartiality, but God has sent his son to us in these last days. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 2. Okay. All right. Do you see that? No, I mean, you can read it. You can read it if you oh, want absolutely. to. Absolutely. Okay, so what, what I'm going to do, guys, I'm going to go ahead and flip the screen, okay? Hebrews chapter 1. One, God who at sundry times and in divers manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things by whom also he made the worlds. So even in the days of the writer of Hebrews, they were in the last days. Okay? So this was roughly... Um, probably about 10 to 15 years before the destruction of the temple in okay. 70 AD. You're talking about the siege of Jerusalem, correct? Yes, exactly. Oh. So the Gog and Magog War says it would happen in the last days. According to the writer of Hebrews, they were living in the last days, okay? Not only that, Peter says in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 7, that they were in the last days. Here. Chapter 4, verse 7. Okay, here. Check this out. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 7. But the end of all things is at hand. Be therefore sober and watch unto prayer. Okay? They were in that last hour. That la uh, John even says they were in the last hour when, when the Antichrist would come. But needless, needless to say... What has ended up happening is that they were in the last days in that very time period, and the Gog and Magog War would happen in the last days of that time period. So what are you suggesting as to what time period do we live in today? What would you call that? Okay. All right. We live in the kingdom of Christ, but here's the thing. It's that people aren't waking up. The elite have held us under their control to keep us down in a spiritual consciousness that is lower than what we could be in. Because they keep on teaching us Jesus needs to return. Jesus needs to return. All these things need to happen. My friend, all of this is being geoengineered by the elite to keep us in a lower frame of mind. Why do you think that when you go to Barnes & Noble or different places... The only books that are up on the shelves when it comes to the Christian section are futurist books. Why do they never teach about all these things ending? Why do they never teach this? Because they're trying to keep you dumbed down. This is how they make money. Uh, I would, I disagree with that. That's fine. But the Bible, it's not about me or you. It has nothing to do with what we say. It has to do with what the Bible says. And the Bible says in the book of Hebrews, they were in the last days. Yes, but we also know that a day with the Lord is like a thousand years. So in reality, it's only been maybe a couple of days in heaven. I, I used to believe this as well. You're talking about 2 Peter chapter 3. Um, in this chapter, when it's talking about this, this is the only verse that a futurist can truly use to try to justify their means. But if I showed you other scriptures like Revelation 17 and 18 about Mystery Babylon, saying when Mystery Babylon was destroyed, that's when the devil would be destroyed or Satan would be destroyed, then I could show you who Mystery Babylon is. And if you know who Mystery Babylon is, you'll know when the revelation took place. Because so wait, you, you believe that we are currently living in the millennial kingdom? No. So like, is there still a Satan out trying to tempt people right now? All the word Satan means is an adversary. That's it. Huh? An enemy, some kind of demonic, some kind of de 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 demonic energy, right? It's it's a so basically what the writer of a, um, the book of James James himself says is that a man is drawn away by his own lust. Okay. Okay. So you don't believe that there's any tempter. No, say there's no Satan going around right now. No, no. Really? No. The How would you explain supposed? And I'm not saying they're all like this, but I don't think every single one of them are faking it. How would you explain all these possessions or exorcisms 
Of course, some of them are fake, but I don't believe that every single one of them are fake. Just like near-death experiences. I, I can't stand when people come on here and they're like, oh, you, you cannot believe a single near-death experience account. They're all lying. I'm like, really? You think they're all, like, every single person is lying about this? I was yeah. like, maybe 50% of them, but I, I do believe that the other people are telling the truth. So, so one thing we have to begin from is, and this would be a good starting point, the last books, two books of the Bible, two chapters, is about the new heavens and new earth, Revelation 21 and 22. Okay. But the Apostle John had to get his theology from somewhere, and he's getting it from Isaiah 66, 65 and 66. I thought he was getting it from a vision of God on the island of Patmos. He was, but uh, Isaiah wrote about it. Isaiah I wrote agree, it. so the scripture connects. Absolutely. I don't think John saw the book of Isaiah and said, okay, I have to make this match that. I think that God gave him the vision, and when he wrote it, people hundreds or decades, whatever, later found, oh, these, these match perfectly because it's the word of God. Exactly, okay? They, they match perfectly, and, and that's the point of it. But there are things that are said in the book of Isaiah about the new heavens and new earth that the Apostle John didn't say in his revelation, okay? So what is the way of salvation now? For people like me and you, a Gentile, or I assume you're a Gentile, what is the way of salvation in your mind? So according to the new heavens and new earth, it talks about how a child shall still die, but the sinner will still be accursed, okay? Even in the new heavens and new earth. That's Isaiah 65, verse 20. Okay. I, oh, I think you're referring. I think that's referring to the millennial kingdom. Are you Are you talking about the verse where it says that the child, like it would be a devastation if a child died at the age of 100? Are you talking about that? Yeah. 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 See, I believe that that's the millennial kingdom. I had this talk with someone a couple days ago, and it's clearly talking about the new heavens and new earth. Because if you go so three that verses back, sense. so huh? is there sin? Is there sin in heaven? There's still sin in the new heavens and new earth. I cannot believe that for a second. Then let, let, let me show you what the Bible has to say. Because it's not what we have to say. It's what the Bible has to say, right? For the wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 6, 23. I agree. All right? But the, the, the thing about it is, is that with this, when it comes to this, Isaiah is making something clear right here. Check this out. Isaiah chapter 65 right here. Let's start from verse 17. Okay. Verse 17 says, For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered nor come into mind. But you glad, but be ye glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem a rejoicing and her people a joy. And I will rejoice in Jerusalem and join my people. And the voice of weeping shall be no more heard in her, nor the voice of crying. There shall be no more thence an infant of days, nor an old man that hath not filled his days. For the child shall die at a hundred years old, but the sinner being a hundred years old shall be accursed. So there's children that still die, and there's sinners that are still accursed in the new heavens and the new earth, okay? So this is the connection point right here. It's connecting. There, there's Revelation 21, on the other hand, verse 1 says, Behold, I, John, saw new heavens and new earth. There was no more sea, and death was no more. Yes. Okay? Okay. So how, how do we connect these? How is it that a child still is going to die, there's death, but then there's still no more death? Because, okay, I know this is a very unpopular opinion, but according to the pre-tribulation pre rapture theory, I'm not saying I subscribe to that, but according to that theory, we believe that, or they believe that the church is raptured out and then they come back with Christ, correct me if I'm wrong, chat, they come back with Christ to uh -huh. rule and govern the nations. So those people would technically be immortal because they've already been raptured. But there will still be, I guess, sinners is what you would call them, mortals living outside of the gate. They're still under the rule of Jesus, but they're still li they're living outside the gate. It's like 
Jesus is the one world perfect government, but the new new heaven and the new earth hasn't yet been created, if that makes any sense. Okay, so there's, so let, let me get this straight. So in Isaiah's writing, he says that there's death and there's sin, but in John's writing, he says there is no more death. Yeah, we Isaiah could be referring to some other fulfillment that I just I lack the knowledge of that maybe has already happened. I don't know. I don't maybe he's referring to a random point in the end times theology. I'll tell maybe. you what it, I, I'll tell you what I believe it means. OK. And I it, there, there's no contradiction whatsoever here. None whatsoever. Isaiah 65 and 63 talking about the new heavens and new earth there is still death there is still sin but when john speaks that there's no more death this is the word thanatos it's the greek word for that of the old covenant it's talking about the old covenant coming to an end so when the old covenant comes to an end what ends up happening death is destroyed paul uses first corinthians chapter 15 to talk about death he says the sting of the law is sin and uh, uh, basically where there is no law, there is no more sin. Okay, so 1 Corinthians chapter 15 talks about this, but Paul got his theology from a certain chapter in Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 25. Isaiah chapter 25 talks about how on the mountain of Sinai, there is a veil that has been placed over all the nations that has made them like like into death like it, it's the it's a veil that's of death but the veil shall be ripped off their eyes and they shall have death no more it's talking about the old covenant okay it's talking about the old covenant being ripped away that is death and then the new covenant comes it's not talking about physical death physical death is always here because where there is flesh there is death okay okay but there's still evil in the world as well. Because Revelation chapter 22, verse 14 and 15 says, In the New Jerusalem, there is no evil. But on the outside of the gates, which is still in the New Earth, there is still evil. Because there's people on the outside of the gates. Okay? How do these people, how do these sinners make it to the New Earth if they're sinners? Because even in the new heavens and the new earth, there's still people that are still alive, but they have the choice to come into Christ's kingdom or not. Christ's kingdom being the new Jerusalem, which is a kingdom that is not seen with physical eyes. Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. Okay, so I think you're just, you're just referring to the millennial kingdom. Like I said, I believe that there will be mortals and immortals on the earth during those days. Okay, all right. Um. Okay, so, sense? yeah, it, it makes sense, but Revelation 22 is talking about the new heavens and the new earth. You see, according to the dispensational view, especially what they teach in seminary, it's that there's a seven-year tribulation, Jesus comes back to reign and rule on earth for a thousand years from Jerusalem. Then what happens is Satan is released for a little season. Yep. He, he's thrown into the fire along with everyone else. Then God creates a new heavens and new earth, okay? Okay. So this is the last part. The new heavens and new earth are the last part. But in... uh, actually, I think Judgment Day, the books are opened right after the defeat of Satan. Am I wrong? Could be wrong. Uh, that's that's to reward and judge every man. The great white throne judgment. I believe it is. Yes. Yeah. I think that's after. And then after Judgment Day, the new heaven, the new earth. Okay. So let, let let's just say this, though. According to Isaiah, there is sin, there is there is death. In the millennial kingdom. No, in the new heavens, in the new earth. See, I, I have to disagree with that. It says it right in Isaiah 65, 17, that it's in the new heavens and new earth. I know, but I'll have to look at the context of it. I don't know. I, I'm actually listening to what you're saying. I think it's very interesting, and I'll look into it. I'm not saying that you're wrong or right, but as of right now, I'm obviously I'm going to be skeptical towards it. That's fine, man. That's fine. No, no worries, man. I, I appreciate you. I appreciate you coming in here. Check it out when, when you get a chance. Basically, it's kingdom that will never be destroyed because it has been set up. But it's up to us now as ambassadors of the kingdom to bring heaven to earth. Wait, hold on, hold on. What you, okay, you, we, we were talking about the defeat of Satan, and you said the new heaven and the new earth is right after that, correct? 
It's the great. Is it the great white throne judgment, then the new heavens and new earth? Yeah, so it's the defeat of Satan, then the judgment before the great white throne, and mm -hmm. then the new heaven and new earth. Because this is what I'm saying. This is why there's no way. It actually disproves it right here. It says, then death and Hades, death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of fire. And if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. Then, hence then, post, post that, then I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and first earth had passed away and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. So, yeah, I think it, it, it just says, then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. Because after it, it says new heaven and new earth. But, but how can you reconcile that when Isaiah says there's death in the new heavens and new earth? What type I of just, death is it talking about? I think it would just have to be, it's, there's something with the context, man. I don't know. I it's really don't the know. Old covenant. That is the covenant of death. It's it's death being thrown in because it's the old covenant. So how do you reconcile then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire? Because that's talking about the one who they made a covenant with, which was death in Isaiah 28. It says in, it says in Isaiah 28 that they made a covenant with death. That. That, that's fine, man, but you have to reconcile that, that in the new heavens and new earth there is still death. There's two deaths. The death that is... No more is the Nautilus. It's the old covenant. As long as there's flesh in earth, there's always going to be physical death. That doesn't make any sense because right here in the new heaven and the new earth section of Jerusalem, it says, And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making thing new. If yes. death is a continuous part of life, then newness is something has got to be new. Also, he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. So there's no way, there's no way that death can be in this. It says, and literally, the next couple of verses, but as for the cowardly, the faithless, the detestable, as for all those people, their portion will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur. Again, this is the second death. Do you, do you think that's talking about hell? Do you think? No, I think you, hell and the lake of fire are two separate places. Okay. Do you think what? what okay. Hades, I would say. Hades okay. and the lake of fire. All right. This, there's the, there's a lot more to this, but basically, who who do you think Mystery Babylon is? That's a very good question. Um, I've heard people say that it's the Roman Catholic Church. I've heard people say that it's Israel. I've heard some people say it's America. I don't know. I genuinely don't know. The Bible tells you who it is. You see, the, the thing, the, this is the beautiful thing about preterism. You don't have to speculate. You don't have to say it's the RFID chip that's the mark of the beast. You don't have to sit here and worry about things because the Bible tells you everything from front to back. No speculation and preterism. Everything's in the Bible that you need. Who do you think it is? It's Jerusalem. It was Old Covenant Jerusalem. Yeah. Is he, yeah. Uh... That doesn't make any sense because the Babylonians took Daniel as a slave to Babylon. Yep. And Israel was founded before that. You, you, you just nailed something. There's, there, there's a key to this in Revelation 18 verse 23. It says, the voice of the bride and the bridegroom shall no more shine at all in me. Where's this verse coming from? Jeremiah chapter. 25 verse 10 which is talking about the babylonian captivity which is talking about when israel went into captivity so you think that babylon and israel molded together during the old testament days that's not what i'm saying what, what i'm trying to say is it's not babylon per se it's mystery babylon mystery babylon was jerusalem because it says it's where the blood of the prophets and the saints and all those who were slain upon the earth are so the, you're talking about the old covenant jews who killed jesus the messiah and the that's Mr. Babylon. yes exactly okay so who who are the israelites or i wouldn't say that word but who are the people who are the followers of israel that will be saved in the end times if they are mystery babylon well romans you're talking about romans chapter 11 you're talking about the olive branch you're talking about how yeah. all israel will be saved right yeah Paul got his theology from Isaiah chapter 27 within this. 
Wait, uh, wait, Mr. Super Cool actually just had a really good point. Uh -huh. He said, Israel still doesn't believe in Jesus. That proves that Jesus hasn't returned yet. That's not true at all because Paul says in Galatians 6.16 that we are the Israel of God. It's a spiritual mm. covenant. See, I, so what was the whole purpose of Israel reforming in 1948? That was all geoengineered. They tried to use Isaiah 66, 8. No, let, 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 listen to me when I say this. Isaiah 66, 8 says that a nation shall be born in one day. They have been trying to use, this is what John Hagee does, David Jeremiah, these seminary schools, they try to say that 1948 Israel is, confirms that verse. No, it doesn't. Peter tells you when a nation was born in one day, and it was on the day of Pentecost. But That's he, told the the Gentiles, he told the Gentiles that they would he would scatter them across the face of the earth and then they all randomly started migrating back to the holy land and israel even today is extremely persecuted i think that the odds of them reunited is so impossible for it to just be geoengineered okay all right well here here's the thing about this did you know that the pre-tribulation rapture was actually funded by a man named John Nelson Darby and C.I. Schofield. Have you ever heard that? Yes, and again, I'm not, I'm actually, this is going to make so many people mad, but I don't think that I believe in the pre-tribulation rapture. Okay, all right. But let's I do let, believe let, in the post-tribulation rapture. Let's, let, let's get away from the pre-tribulation rapture, because that's just the beginning of this mess. It was a teaching on dispensational theology of when Jesus Christ would return a thousand years for a thousand years to reign, okay? The C.I. Schofield Bible that was funded by this man, his second reference Bible came out in 1917. Wait, 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 wait. Are you saying that all of the ancient saints, that saints a thousand years ago that wrote anything about scripture, even commentary, none of them believed in a pre-tribulation rapture? Because I would disagree. Yeah, the, the thing is, I would say that they wanted, maybe the Roman Catholics did at some point, but I wouldn't say anyone up to the third or fourth century. But was it their hope that Jesus would return? So there, there was a man named Oregon and around. Uh, no, I'm saying the disciples. No, uh, yeah, their, their hope was in that generation. That's when their but hope. Jesus was. didn't return. No, he did. He, Jesus already returned. Jesus already returned. It was a spiritual coming. Do you know that there were multiple returns of God in the Old Testament? So multiple comings of God. If Jesus already returned, explain like explain that to me. I know that people say okay, who like who would had the Antichrist have been? And yes, I know the Antichrist isn't technically one person, but who would have been the son of perdition, the Antichrist of that time? Nero? It was, it was Nero. Kaiser Nero. Kaiser Gematria lines up to 666. I agree with that. I believe that his number is that. But I think that history and the future is a will within a will. And I think that certain things repeat itself. So Just, so you, you are right. Every generation has a type of, it seems like, uh, future coming or whatever you would want to say. But the biblical eschaton happened in the days of the first century church. That's when it was to occur. If Jesus already returned, that would make me doubt his power so much because there's still so much evil in the world. You just answered your own question why the Pharisees doubted him. No, the, the, Jesus, Jesus performed miracles on the earth during that time and performed many, many fulfilling prophecies of that time. Like, for example... The revelation says that he's going to ride a white horse, correct? But he rode a donkey. So I think that's just like the foreshadowing of his future coming. Okay. All right. So let, let, let me ask you this. <laughs> Wade, you're probably right. Let, let, let me ask you this. And I want you to really think about this. And, and let this sink into your mind, okay? When Jesus came the first time, when they wanted a Messiah, every single person on here, listen to this. When Jesus came the first time, what did the Pharisees and the religious leaders expect the Messiah to be? A, a king. A king. A trampling, overcoming king that was going to bring a physical kingdom that was going to overthrow the Romans. Or overthrow those who were in world power. But we, of that but we, aren't, we aren't under the law anymore, though. 
I'm not saying, dude, li listen to what I have to say. I'm listening. The Messiah to the Pharisees was a man that was going to overthrow Rome and destroy them, bring a physical kingdom. That was their opinion. No, no. This is even what Nicodemus believed. You're not listening. I'm Listen listening. to me, okay? <laughs> I'm listening. When, when Jesus came, they wanted a Messiah to overthrow the Roman Empire or the world power of that time. Agree, agree. What does Christianity want today? They want a Messiah that is going to overthrow the powers of this world, just like the Pharisees believed in the first century. The exact same Wait, hold thing. on, hold on. I think I have a verse that's fulfilling what you're saying right now, but contradictory yeah. to what you're saying. Go for it. Try me. Second Peter 3, 3. Yeah, you're talking about the earth being melted up, the heavens and the frozen. Yeah. Not that. You're, you're, you're talking about the scoffers in the day, yeah. Can I read it just for, just for chat sake? I know you know it. but go, go ahead and read it. That's fine, man. All right. By the way, I actually really appreciate us kind of just being able to talk and not have like a terrible discussion. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely, man. Absolutely. All right. For the chat's sake, knowing this, first of all, that scoffers <laughs> will come in the last days with scoffing, mm -hmm. following their own sinful desires, they will say, and this is where I feel like you're, this is what you're saying. Where is the promise of his coming? Where is the promise of his coming? Where is he if he's going to come back? For ever since the fathers fell asleep, all things are continuing as they were from the beginning of creation. For they deliberately overlooked this fact that the heavens existed long ago and the earth was formed out of water and through water by the word of God. And then it literally goes on. I didn't even realize that this is the same verse. But do not overlook this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day... Is it a thousand years? Is it one day? The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise as some count slowness. I want you to think about this one more time. This is what we're doing right now. We're both saying, oh, it's been a thousand no, years. No, no, we're not years. because that was in a different time. That was before the judgment of Jerusalem. Every single scholar out there will say that, oh, Paul believed that Jesus was coming back in his time, but they were wrong. No, he wasn't. Now, if Paul, if Paul was one of the men that revealed the mystery, he would know when it came. In other words, what what people are trying to do today, they try to use these verses to. When who who was uh, First Peter written to or Second Peter? Uh, I would have to look. I don't know. Do you know? I believe it was Babylon. I can look. Second Peter was wrote to. Sorry, I got one hand. You're good, man. Um, well, it's first and second know. Peter, so you'll know through first Peter who it was written to. Uh, strangers scattered in Pontius, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. All right, th there you go. That that answers the question. It was God. It was given to first century people, strangers in Pontius, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. It was given to them. All right. Now, now, I'm trying to get you to think about this, man. For Okay. If, if the first century Jews wanted a king that was going to overthrow the Roman Empire, come back as a reigning and ruling king, and they got it wrong and they crucified him on a cross... What are Christians doing today? They, they want a reigning king that's going to overthrow the Roman Empire and come back. That's exactly... Wait, Christians want that today? I disagree. So so you're telling me Christians don't want to overthrow a Roman Antichrist or, or an Antichrist, destroy the people in Armageddon, go out and throw the tares in the fire and keep the wheat on earth. And then we're going to reign and rule with Christ. Like I said, I believe that the reigning and ruling with Christ is before the judgment, like the book of Revelation says. Okay. Well, here, here's the thing. This is all I'm saying. Just think about that. Yeah, we, we just want – dude, I don't think we're really wanting a king to come back. Jesus is king. We want a our God to come back uh, through hope. 
through pure hope and eliminate sin. He's already come back. He's in you. He's in me. Oh, I be, yeah, the Holy Spirit. Th that's because he said that he would leave the Holy Spirit for us. This is the trippy part. This is how I know that Jesus is the Holy Spirit and the Father at the exact same time. He says, where two or three are gathered in my name, for I'm in the midst of them, right? But then he also says, I go to prepare a place for you. So which is it? Are you in the midst of me or are you preparing a place for me? That proves that Jesus is God. He is omnipresent, omnip omnipotent, omniscient, whatever it is. He is all of it at the same time. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Are we are we the temple of God? Yes. Okay. If we're the temple of God, where does the New Jerusalem go then? In the Israeli location, the most highly contested land on earth. So so if we're the temple of God and the temple, the tabernacle, the physical temple is no more, which even Stephen, before he was getting ready to be stoned, before the Sanhedrin, he says, the Most High does not dwell in a temple made by human hands. Then Wait, who's Wade, the temple? Wade, I would slightly disagree. Maybe I said that in a different way, but like, this is what I believe. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God, but the Son of God is the manifestation of the Father. Just like okay. Jesus right. is Dude. peace. The Holy Spirit is right. peace. We're not we're, we're we're not talking about the Trinity right now. Let's let's talk about this. If we are the temple, and Stephen, before he was getting ready to be killed before the Sanhedrin in Acts seven, said that the Most High does not dwell in a temple made by human hands. Why are we still making it physical? I'm not arguing for a physical temple today. I would believe that Jesus Christ Himself would have to do that. Then why are we arguing for a physical New Jerusalem? Why are we arguing for physical things when where God doesn't dwell in human temples? Because I believe it's a prophecy. I believe it's an Old Testament prophecy that so it needs to be fulfilled. Well, the old prophets, remember in Hebrews chapter 1, they only seen in part. They didn't see the full fulfillment until Jesus came in the last days. So what I'm trying to say is this. Everyone is trying to make this physical when Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. When Jesus said, the kingdom of God does not come with careful observation. Everyone's trying to make it physical when it's not physical. It's spiritual. I don't know, dude. That's fine. Don't worry about it, man. Just keep on studying. Okay? Um. All I'm saying is this, man. All, please, just reconsider everything and try to think of it like this. That if there is still evil in this world, this is why the things are going on today. Because guess what? We deserve, and I'm going to tell it straight to everyone on here. Because of you guys believing in a second coming of Christ that's still coming when it's a kingdom that's within. We are in the peril in the world conditions that we are wait are you in. saying that you are jesus i'm not saying that at all that's in not sense, you are huh we believe that the holy spirit is dwelling within us as christians but we also believe that jesus himself is literally going to descend okay here's the thing though man you're not what i'm trying to tell you is this everyone is trying to make something physical they're trying to make it something that it's not because Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. Jesus even said to the Samaritan woman, woman, there's coming a day where you're not going to worship on this mountain or that mountain. You're going to worship God in spirit and in truth. So what we're doing is, this is what we're doing as Christians. We are taking things and what Jesus said was spiritual. We're trying to make it physical again. That's what well, we're trying no, to do. I'm the opposite. I think that all physical materialistic things will perish. I'm actually asking for the spiritual rejuvenation of everything, the newness. Behold, I create everything new. I'm not asking for the physical. So so M Missy made a really good point right here. As long as you keep looking without, you never gain access to the kingdom within. How can we ever bring heaven to earth if we never look within? Because that's where the kingdom lies. That's what I'm trying to get at here. We uh, keep on, we're looking to external hope. But, we but don't I think you in, you, in a sense, are calling yourself God, and that is somewhat Gnostic. I'm calling myself God. Do you, do you understand what, what I just said? That You're saying that, God is inside you, so you can create the spiritual rebirth here. Absolutely. 
in the physical Absolutely. world. In the physical world? Absolutely. I disagree. I believe that we can – I believe that no matter what – now, this may be a really hot take. I believe that no matter what, my flesh is corrupt. And the reason I know that it's corrupt is because I'm going to die. What What, what is the new heavens and new earth about? Complete uh, immortality. The mortal will put on immortality. The, okay. incorrupt, the corruptible will put on incorruptibility, whatever it says. If, if there's a new – what what is this earth made up of? What do you mean? It's made up of dust. And to dust we return. Yes, our flesh will die. Hey, what about Jesus and the rich man when he talked about the parable of the rich man? That You're talking about hell? Yeah. And not, I, I, dude, first off, you're going way off side track you know, right now. Well, I'm just trying to prove to you. You're trying to say like there is no spiritual world. I'm not saying that. that that's not what I said. I don't get what you're – What's the end goal? Like, okay, what is the very last thing to happen in your worldview? My worldview is for Christians to wake up, realize that it's not the book of Revelation unfolding. No, I'm right asking now, you, whatever the last thing on your timeline is, what is that? The, the last thing on my timeline is that for people to wake up, people to oh. understand that we can bring heaven to earth. What event is the last thing to happen? There, there's nothing to happen. So this is the, this is the best it's going to get. No, that's not what I'm saying. You think it'll slowly get to perfection? I I slowly believe that when people wake up and they stop acting like idiots, we're going to see it happen. People aren't reading their Bibles. This is the problem. They so let where the pastor you tell go when you what die? they believe up in the church pew. What happens when you die? Where are you going to go? What happens when I die? I'm going to heaven. I'm going to be with Jesus. But if there is no eternal new heaven and new earth, why would you go to heaven if you can't go back to your body? Wait, what? I don't get it. I don't get what I don't get what your end goal is. You're just saying over time humans are going to slowly become just perfect. just un understand this, man. Jesus said it, not me. That this kingdom is not without; it's within you. That's Luke seventeen twenty one. Jesus told Pontius Pilate that if my kingdom was of this world, my people would fight on my own behalf. My kingdom is not I of this agree. world. I agree. Okay. So here's the thing. Why are we this making earth it so will physical? Be, dude, that's why this earth will be destroyed with a fervent heat. No, that's not what yes. that's talking about. I Do you know what the word elements? Do you know what the word elements is being used for? I have no, no idea. I would assume all of life. The word – no. The word elements is the word stoichion. It comes from the Greek, and every single time it's used in the New Testament, it's talking about the elements of the law. The law being destroyed. The Israelites considered their temple as their heavens and their earth. When that was destroyed, it made way for a new heavens and a new earth, which is our temple, which is the temple of God. I think that you're calling yourself, you are giving yourself too much power and not enough power to Jesus. Really? Yes. Because, because Jesus made it clear in John chapter 17 that, Father, the glory I have give, I, you have given to me, I give to my disciples and anyone that follows me. Really? And behold, I am coming soon. Blessed is the one who keeps the word of this prophecy of this book. I am coming soon. He, he even says at the very end, he who testifies to these things says, surely I am coming soon. I don't think if if. OK, let me ask you this. This might destroy your worldview. When was Revelation written? Oh, boy, we're going to go here. It no, was just, written no, 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 just roughly, just roughly. It was written around 64, 65 AD. After what? 64 years after? 64, 65 AD, about five to six years before the destruction of the temple. But how many years after the death of Christ? It was written about 30, 33 years after Christ. So if we had already received the Holy Spirit at that point, then why would he say, surely I am coming soon, 60 years later? Because that was talking about for the Israelites. In the book of Hebrews, and it, listen to me, I'm going to use the Bible right now to let you know. In the book of Hebrews, it says the old covenant, covenant was coming nigh unto passing. That was during, after the cross, that was during the evangelization mission of the apostles. It said the old covenant was coming nigh unto passing. It still didn't pass. Why didn't it pass? Because the temple was still standing. So when the temple was destroyed, when the day of the Lord occurred, the great and dreadful day of the Lord occurred, that says in Malachi chapter 4, verse 5 and 6, that Elijah would come before that day, that was John the Baptist that was coming to heed the warning, to tell them to flee from the wrath to come. 
And it even says that the axe was already laid to the root of the tree. So it happened back then. It was for the first century audience. And if you want the kingdom now, you can have the kingdom. And here's the beauty of it. We can bring heaven to earth because Jesus fulfilled it all. So what's going to happen to this earth? The earth will not burn with a fervent heat? No, no. Ecclesiastes, chapter, Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 4. That the, I know what you're going to say. Huh? What? I know where you're going with this, but say it. It talks about how the earth will abide forever. Yeah, but you also have to admit that the book of Ecclesiastes is a very philosophical book philosophical okay. book and he he exaggerates okay scientific truth in it a little bit okay all right so let, let, let's just throw that to the wayside what, what about the argument i made about the elements with fervent heat the word elements being used every single time for the word stoichion in greek it means the law every single time it's used i don't Is know that, i would also have to do a speech context thing for that because I, I don't know i'm not saying i can't trust you but i can't trust you that's fine, man. You don't have to trust me, okay? What's your hope in? I don't. What's your hope in if you're just gonna die and everyone's gonna die? And what's your hope? My, my hope. Well, Jesus already returned. He did what he said he was going to do. We are under the new covenant because it's an everlasting covenant. My hope I now. We're in the new covenant. Okay. My hope now is that people will wake up to the deception that's played over our eyes. And then what? Let's say they wake up. Then what? Well, once they wake up, heaven can come to earth. Jesus said it. Give me an example on earth where there's death and hell and sin, but it's perfection at the same time. To me, that doesn't make any sense. Slow, sl slowly over time, when people start to wake up, when the futurist books aren't being pushed out to the mainstream public, when David Jeremiah, John Hagee, and all these guys lose their support, when the seminary stops spewing the garbage they do because it's ran by the elite, we will not have the wool played over our eyes but, and we will wake up to the truth and heaven can come to earth. Jesus said it on earth as it is in heaven. Okay. Yeah. I think that's saying like, I think that, uh, what's it, what's the dude's name? Decola day or something like that. I follow him. I don't know if you do. He made a really cool, uh, analogy he was saying the earth everything on earth was like the shadow of heaven so it's like if you look at a dog or something the, the, a dog it, is awesome but in heaven the animal is going to be so much cooler so much better looking more dimensional characteristics to it you know what i'm saying the call a day ryan dead hidden him and i had a debate two years ago the only thing he goes off of is speculation talking about how it's a wheel within a wheel All yeah he i agree with that okay Oh, yeah, I, I used to believe that, too, a couple of years ago. But when we had our debate, all he did was use speculation and fear-based tactics when everything is there in the Bible. He blocked me, by the way. He blocked what would, me. What would you do if a world leader came together and somehow, somehow brought all the nations together and unified them into one world religion? Would you believe that that is the Antichrist, and would you agree that you were wrong if that no. happened? No, I wouldn't. If no. that happened. No, I well, wouldn't. Then, I, I think you're too set in your ways. I think you need to I, be open. I, I, I'm not shaken. I've I, I've read the Bible a lot. I've read it a lot more than a lot of pastors out there. Hey, I, the devil quoted scripture, dude. I here's it, here's the thing. At the end of the day, when you know who Mystery Babylon is, you will not be shaken. And Mystery Babylon tells you is where the blood of the prophets, the saints, and all those who were slain upon the earth were. Guess what Paul said in First Timothy, First Thessalonians chapter two, verse fifteen. He said that the Lord Jesus cru was crucified by the Jews and that all of the blood of the Jews lays on their shoulders. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 23 that the blood of the prophets that was slain would be upon from Abel to Zechariah, 4,000 years of bloodshed on Jerusalem. That was the great tribulation. That was mystery Babylon spoken of in Ezekiel 16 and Jeremiah chapter 4. And when you put everything together, that's when it was to end. And because of that, we are not in the book of Revelation. We are under the new covenant. This is all geoengineered. It is man-made manipulated. When people start thinking that this is the mark of the beast and they start dying because of their beliefs, they didn't do the studying. And guess what? Honestly, 
the way we're going right now, especially the way people are, and the way everything is going, it's going to be a sad day, man. Because so, people did not study the scriptures. If be, there were a mark of the beast, you would still be like, nah, I don't believe that. No, it's not the mark of the beast. The mark of the, the mark of the beast is not speculation. It was given in the law. It was given in the Old Testament. I disagree, man. But it gives specific instructions. You cannot buy or sell unless you have the mark. Yeah, well, how absolutely. would that be a spiritual phrase? Re Revel buy or sell. I, all, all I'm going to say this is Revelation chapter 13, verse 16 talks about the mark of the beast. Re remember that. Revelation 13, verse 16. Okay? Exodus chapter 13, verse 16. Did you hear what I said? Revelation 13, 16 and Exodus 13, 16. Same, same numbers. It talks about the front lip between your eyes and the mark on your right hand. Why, why do you think when yeah, Paul... Yeah, that's symbolic. I believe that marks can be symbolic, but I believe that the Revelation one, for some reason, the added detail to it, I do believe that it can be physical. Okay, well, basically what I'm trying to tell you is this. Revelation 13, 16, the only place that a mark on the forehead or on the right hand is mentioned in the New Testament is the exact same place in the Old Testament where a mark on the forehead or on the right hand is mentioned. Exodus chapter 13, verse 16. Paul tells you that the Judaizers were going through killing the people. The Judaizers were the ones who were law-based. They were following the law. They were so strict with the law. Wait, now, hold on one second. He causes all, young and old, rich and poor, to receive a mark so that they cannot buy or sell. Absolutely. That's a spiritual thing? That happened in Jerusalem. Dude, no. The, the, yes. The, the, the Christians no. were kicked out. They could only buy from the temple. Do you see what Coach Peter just said here? No, it's about to storm here, though. <laughs> yeah, I can see that, man. That's crazy. Dude, I'm telling you what. The wolves being played over our eyes. Please just keep on studying. Please don't, don't give in deception. Seriously. So who has the right answers? The Bible has the right answers. I don't have the right answers. I'll never say I have everything right. But I'll tell you this much. Study the Bible. But before you try to speculate on stuff that's coming and try to think of things to see it with your physical eyes, remember Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. Which is why I completely agree. Which is why, okay, what you just said. This is why I believe that we aren't in the new heaven and new earth because I can see this heaven or I can see this supposed new heaven and new earth with my eyes right now. Second Corinthians chapter because five verse seven to me. Second Corinthians chapter five verse seventeen. Paul says that therefore, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. Behold, yeah. all things have become new. Old things. Yeah, I believe that his soul is saved, but the flesh will still die. As long as there is an earth, a new heaven. A, Wait, think sir. About this is why he said you must be born again. In order again. to see the kingdom. Uh, yes, you must be born again. Okay, then what is the kingdom if it's being born again? The kingdom is the heavenly, eternal place of God. And there's no way that it's this right here. As beautiful as earth may be, this is not the new heaven and the new earth. I just, I cannot believe that. That's fine. But guess what? Does the flesh pass away? Yes. Okay, so let me ask you this. What is your flesh made up of? Dust. There you go. So it's I never earth. wanted to say that. So it's earth. Therefore, if the new heavens and the new earth are around, that means the new earth is dust. It's made up of dust, so your flesh always... No, he said, behold, I make all things new. Do you, so do you, not, understand, new. Do you not understand okay. what I just said? What is the earth made up of? Why, wait, why did he say the mortal will put on immortality? Dude. Because it's talking about Isaiah chapter 25. It's talking about the destruction of the veil that was placed over the people's eyes on Mount Sinai so that they would come under the new covenant. This is from Isaiah 25. It's not so just... Jesus some... descends with the voice of an archangel and the dead in Christ rise first. You think this has already happened? That happened. It's done. 
First Thessalonians chapter four already happened. Paul said, it's we who are alive and remaining. We, not us, we. He was talking about himself. Yeah, Linda, I agree. If Jesus is reigning on the earth right now, he's not doing a very good job. Because you don't understand that he's reigning through you and you're not doing your job. So what is Jesus supposed to do? Jesus already returned. I disagree. Okay? He returned in the power of the Holy Spirit. When we get to heaven, we'll see him. Okay? But until then, you are the one that has the power to bring heaven to earth. It is I mean, our it's job. It's starting to rain here and the winds power. are it's starting to rain here and the winds are picking up. I gotta let you go. Bless you, man. Have a good one. Yep. Blessings. Do you guys not understand? <laughs> we are the ones with the power on heaven. All right. Who wants to come up? Hello. Hey, what's going on, Todd? How are you? Good. I like to talk about heresies. Go for it, man. Like, uh, one heresy I like is the idea that Jesus is the Father and the Holy Spirit all wrapped up in one. Okay, all right. Here, Here's the thing. I'm going to talk about this tonight. Let's talk about, do you want to talk about end times? Another one. How about uh, the end times? Uh, how about I don't believe in eternal damnation? I don't believe in it either. Cool. I love I love exploring heretical beliefs because I think there's a problem when you accept some kind of orthodox position. I think there has to be freedom to believe in Christ. Uh, absolutely. Uh, well, the Lord wants us to think outside of the box. He doesn't want us to be held up in religious doctrine, traditions of men. And that's where this orthodox faith comes in. If any of you are fans of inspiring philosophy, tell them I said that, all right? Because here's here's the thing. These scholars think that they know something, but they're, oh, God, I, I, I don't even know where to start with them. But basically, here's the thing. Are you a Christian? Let me ask you that. Well, I feel like I'm a Christian, but from the way Christians treat me, I feel like I don't like Christians. I agree. Because guess what? They're condemning. They believe in the eternal place of conscious torment. Therefore, they feel like there is the right way, and they have it right. Well, guess what? First Timothy chapter 4, verse 10 says that Jesus Christ is the Savior of all men, especially those who believe. I try to give Christians a lot of slack, right? Like, if you believe something different than me, I try not to let it bother me. I try to just, like, like oh, that's interesting. And that way, I still have a friendship. Well, man... Here's the thing, man. I'm trying to talk to people about the second coming of Christ, the revelation prophecy. I'm trying to talk to people about this because we need to bring this to the forefront. Yeah, like I like to talk about Jesus too, and I want people to uh I want people to see a side of God that's not portrayed very often. You know, it's like I like things that are mystical. And if and if Jesus, if you can follow Jesus and still be mystical, then I would be interested in it. But I don't really fit into your Sunday church. I, I've been going to Sunday churches for a long time, different ones, and I find them very bland. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I used, I've been to excited churches like black churches where they stomp their feet and clap their hands. I love the emotions of those kind of experiences. Mm -hmm. They have that rhythm and they have that fervor, and I, I used to really like that. And then I've, I've also been in a, uh, you might call it a cult. It was called uh, Yahshua's people, and they live together in a commune. They're like called twelve tribes. Okay. A lot of people have, a lot of people have heard of them. They believe that they are the prophecy of like in Revelation that talks about the new twelve tribes. Well, here, Todd, the thing, do you believe Jesus is coming or not? Well, I sure hope so. I mean, it's been 2,000 years, and I'm getting tired of waiting. Okay. 
All right. I got you, man. I really think that God should do it, you know? Like, God, I'm tired of God setting up all this religion where we're talking about Jesus coming back, and it just, it's just, it's getting to be like uh, someone who's late for their own birthday party. Yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, Derek, I, I invited you, man. Yeah, but Todd, bless you, man. Um, the thing is, just realize that the kingdom of God is within you, all right? Oh, can I tell you another her uh, heresy I've been thinking about? What's that? Hey, everybody. Uh, hey, and, 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 What's going on, brother? Yeah, what, what's I'll that? wrap this up. Hey, I, I'm, I'm, happy, I'm happy to see everybody here. Hi. A bunch of a bunch of seeking a bunch of seeking hearts, man. Let me tell you something. A yep. bunch of seeking hearts. I don't care what you think, whether you hate this gentleman, whether you hate me, or whether you hate anybody else, and what we're saying, all of you have a seeking heart, and that is the love of God. Amen, brother. Right on. Amen. Amen, brother. Bless you, man. Hope all you're all well. seeking, man. I love that. If you're seeking, I don't care who you're seeking. <coughs> and look, here, here, and here's and here's really what it comes down to, brother. We mm -hmm. don't get to judge anybody's journey, okay? As long as what your stated journey is the same destination as mine, we're both on the same journey. We're destined to be at the same location because that's what's in our GPS. Amen, brother. Doesn't matter how we arrive there. You don't get to judge the next man's journey. So just keep that in mind, folks. Let them. Let them I'm a little bit more desperate, stated, though. As eh? long as, as long as they're stated, as long as they're trying to arrive at the same place you are, stop judging them. I just want people to stay alive and just survive. Like every 24 hours, look in the mirror and say, "I will survive for another 24 hours and live one day at a time." And just make okay, it. And, and let and let me let me just question you that for that for one second. Staying alive is staying alive the goal. Yeah, surviving. No, no, we're but, in a very but, but dangerous what, world. No but, no, but stop. Dangerous world is staying alive in this flesh. Your goal. Oh yeah. Really? Well, then you deny everything Jesus said. You deny Jesus well, I, in every single turn, every single thing he ever said. If you're, if you, sir, are professing that I do. you're, so then if you're profess, then you know not anything about Christ. Nothing. Not a single thing. And that's why he could say, I didn't know you. I've never known you. Well, if God's going to say that to me, then I never wanted to be with him anyways, because I want a God that is my friend and won't hurt me. Well, now you know the God of this world. The God of this yeah. world is not your friend. He's not a comforter. He's not loving. He is not merciful. He's not the God of this world, like Jesus yeah. told you. The Zen the God of this world. But sir, if you're, if you, and you just told me that you were honoring you're and loving orthodox. the God of this world. I'm not orthodox. Shit, are you kidding me? Yeah, orthodox, he's not orthodox crap. Man. I don't follow any really. You don't even know who I am. So first, before you talk to me like you think you know what I'm talking about, I would I would do a little bit of research on who I am. Just before you, well, I before feel... you just before you speak up, I'm talking to you. Talk to address the words that I'm saying to you directly right now. Not what you think right now. What did I said to you? You are honoring your life in this world, and you're trying to survive in this world. And everything that Jesus said was different than that. So who are you? Do you follow Jesus? Well, currently I have a roof over my head. I have a job. So are those G are, are those of Christ? The roof over your head and and your job is that Christ? Is that what he straight wait, up is? That it what is. He is that what he told you to have? Hey, go get a job and work for the man and put a roof over your head, and that's going to be <laughs> salvation. I'm yeah. uh, seriously. I mean, listen to yourself. Stop. I it. love having a job. Oh, awesome! Then good. Then then you know what? You should put, hit delete. Delete your TikTok app. TikTok app. Stop having a conversation with real people that are actually seeking Christ. Yeah. Here. Well, the, the, while while we're talking about what what is Christ and. 
Uh, I'm just going to jump in here and say thank you for the, the debate earlier. You guys were both phenomenal, and I loved the way you presented it. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, it was it was peaceful. It was great. And yeah. it's always going to be talking peaceful. about like <laughs> what it's is Christ, be peaceful, man. and we're thinking we're thinking like okay, we, we debated on scripture, but how much of that scripture was placed there by the people that wanted to deceive you? That is of the question all of I have it, all right of it. now, and, all, and, all and, of and it. how can we debate only using scripture when that is what was put there to to, to make you believe in a certain way and a, and a certain God who is not your God is not the he's a bloodthirsty God. So Jared, it, I love it. I seems love your like a, like a right <laughs> like a, you got a left and a right wing uh, party to vote for. And uh, both lead to the same slaughter pit, and that's what <laughs> yeah. uh, it seems like when it comes to what happened with Christianity. But I, I but somehow in my heart, I, I feel the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. and I feel Christ. So yeah. how do I differentiate between what is uh, Christ and what is the deception? What is Absolutely. the Christ and what is of this world? Oh, what a brilliant, yeah. what a brilliant question. Thanks. And and is that, do, am I pronouncing that right, Jared? Am yeah. I pronouncing your name? Okay, it's Jared. I just want to make sure I'm pronouncing your name right. Jared, brilliant question, brilliant statement. And the thing is, is see, I don't even need to answer the question for you. You're proposing the question for everybody else because you already know the answer. Right. But I'm going to say it. And that is the reason is that Christ is within us. Okay, so there is no external reaching of anything for Christ. Zero. We don't need a organization. There is no government. You are, if you are in Christ, you are an anarchist in every way, sense, and form. But the yeah. difference is that they, they've told you that anarchy means something different. When it says that the government rests on Christ's shoulders, it means because the government, all of it, all of your decisions and all of your governance relies on you, you and Christ and you. Once you stand in Christ, the government rests on your shoulder. And guess what? At that point, you get to determine who is good for you and who is not good for you, who is good in your life and who is not good in your life. And you begin to separate and create your nation and your allies like any other nation would. Yeah. You begin to determine what nations are good for me to be communicating with. Absolutely. Ones that understand me and that I understand them. That's where a nation is of a people. It's not a country. A country is bullshit lines. It's all a lie. Yeah. yeah. It's a lie in tor in intended to usurp people. And well, to it's an ideology, well though. It's all it's, an ideology. It's an ideology it's that religion. works. No, absolutely. So here's the thing. Christ is literally inside of you. He told you where the kingdom resides. There is no disputing this. Christ said the kingdom is within you. If God resides in the kingdom and he resides at the right hand of the king, right? Yep. And you reside at the left hand of the king in the other seat, well then guess what? The left and the right combine and they become centered and they are centered in one in the Father, the Creator, merciful. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. This is not a hard equation. And somehow people are having a hard time finding this and it fucking amazes me. You know, that's, that, that's the thing, Derek, too. <laughs> when Jesus said that the kingdom of God is within you, he didn't just make that up. He got that from the Egyptian Proverbs. It's real. It's actually it's, there. Yeah, so here's the whole yeah. point. And here's the, and this is why I say fuck. Okay, Josh? I know this I already is know why you I know you got lot I know you got lots of you know you know you and I've had lots of conversations, okay? Yep. The very first thing I'm going to do is say fuck so people don't think I'm Jesus or think I think I'm Jesus. Right, right. Right? I'm going to shatter your idea of what you think Christ is. Yep. End of story. But here's the reality. You are Christ, I am and this man is definitely Christ. So understand what you're dealing with here. You do not want to be on the opposite side of all of us when all of this comes to pass. I promise you. 
because the illusions that they have created before your eyes are so grand and so great. And believe me, that shit's about to be erased. Yep. And when it is, you're going to start to realize that the people that said fuck are the people of Christ. <laughs> they were they were the ones that weren't religious. These were the ones. Oh, I'm not religious that. because guess what? The word fuck means nothing. OK, yeah. Yeah. so any religion that wants to take a word like that and somehow make it. Oh, my God, you're blasphemy. You're not religious. You don't know Jesus because you said fuck. I can promise you right now, if Jesus were right here, right this minute, he would say fuck at least a thousand times a day. Amen, man. Well, uh, trust guys, me, I, but I, I can promise you he would. Yeah. Because yeah, look guys, at the world we live in, bro. Look at the, it, it, and it's because it's also an expression of an understanding that we all, I mean, all of us. Understand. All of us are living this stuff right now, okay? We are living in a world of such delusion. It's insane. Absolutely. It's insanity, Absolutely. brother. And if you are going to deviate and you're not going to listen to somebody because they said the word fuck, that's the perfect example of how easy it was for you to be de deviated from truth talkers. Absolutely. That, that's the thing because that's a measure of your heart. Yeah, and I, and I want people to know, if you can get past me saying fuck, then you can hear some truth. And I don't want weaklings here. I don't want weaklings with me, brother. I don't want people here talking to me, following me, sending me, sending me messages. I have hundreds of thousands of people following my stuff. And I don't want weaklings sending me messages. So if you can't accept me saying fuck, well, then guess what? Don't write me. Yeah, yeah. Well, brother... Um, guys, thing is, you know, at the I end destroyed of the day, your Christian channel. I'm sorry, Joshua. <laughs> you're good, Derek. No, no worries, man. No, it's, uh, no, I I'm love you. And, and let me just say this. Let me just say this about you, Joshua. Everybody I've, I've been talking to Joshua now for about two years, for two and a half years, maybe. Right, Joshua. Yep. yep. About two and a half years. Yeah. Yeah. We've had multiple and, and I've, I've watched him go from different places and different pieces of all of this. And here's the one thing I can confirm to you. This is a man that is truly, 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 truly seeking truth. Okay, he has come to me. He's beat me up and he said, I'm fucking wrong. I'm right, I'm wrong, I'm right. I don't care. I love him. He is a genuine soul. This man is a genuine soul. And probably one of the very few that I've told everybody, and I don't give a shit who you are, and, and I'll say this to you, Joshua. You'll say things I don't necessarily understand either, but I understand what you're trying to do. I understand what you're yeah. trying to uncover. I understand what you're trying to see. And guess what? How many people are doing that? None. So you... Right are ordained for that. So you keep going, brother, and don't listen to a thing that any of these people say. I don't care how much they hate you. Uh, you, you were promised that they would hate you, right? Yeah. That was a promise, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's it was a promise. If you start saying the things that I say, Jesus said, if you start talking like me, they will hate you. They will kill you and think they're doing the work of who? Of God. Absolutely. My question is, which God? Yep. Amen. So I love you and everybody listening to Joshua. Joshua is a good, 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 good man. He is a good man. This is a man with a real heart. He's not trying to deceive anybody. He's trying to find truth. And I love him for that. Whether he's right or wrong and indifferent, I don't care. He is seeking truth. I yeah. love him for that. And I love you, Joshua. I just want to let you know that. Love you, Derek. Bless you, man. We may right, disagree brother. on some stuff, but at the end of the day... We can always disagree, but I love you no matter what. <laughs> Absolutely. I don't care. Disagreement. Do you know what disagreement is? It's called refinement. Absolutely. Iron sharpens iron. You disagree with me. <laughs> I disagree with you. Guess what? We're ultimately going to end up at the truth. Because we want to bring heaven to earth. We want to... Done. We both have the same end goal with people to tell them, don't believe in this delusion. Let's like I said, it doesn't matter where we're trying. As long as we are both trying to reach the same summit, yep. we're both climbing the same mountain, right? Joshua, you're climbing Mount Everest. You're climbing from the east face. 
I'm climbing from the west face. You're climbing the nine? Right, it is. Right, right. It has entirely different faces. It has entirely different challenges. But we're both trying to reach the same summit. People, stop, 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 stop judging people. Stop yeah. it. Yeah. Start listening. We're all on different paths. Stop judging these people. Josh was a good man. A good man. I mean, a great man. You could, let me tell you something. If we had 150,000 of Joshua's in this world, we wouldn't have a problem. Not a single one. Yeah. That, that's where I'm at now. I appreciate as well, that, with, with regards to like, not wanting to judge people, but I feel like my, my empathy is kind of uh, become a weakness in terms of saying everyone should have their belief. And I'm wondering if it's, it's starting to come into my family and starting to become part of something that's influencing what I have to like draw a line in the sand and say, listen, like I don't have a YouTube channel. I'm not speaking out. This is the first time I've been on a live on TikTok before, but I've been watching Josh for like two years and a whole bunch of other people too. But there's some point where it's like, I know in my heart what's right. And then how, you, you don't want to judge people, but then you also want to say, guys, you, you have to, you have to get this. So where, how, yeah, you have to fight. And then you also have to decide What's yeah, but right don't don't don't, you, you, don't judge the man. You're also you're also wrong. I mean, like yeah, you're also yeah, wrong. You don't have the to judge the where man. you are now, because in five years' time, you're going to believe something different Absolutely. than you believe now. Absolutely, you know what I mean. And yeah, I've well, seen that in my own life. Yeah, potentially, but you don't have to judge the man. You're right that we might judge something differently. We might see things differently. That's why we don't want to be dogmatic about something that we believe we know right now. Absolutely. That's where religion is right now. So religion gives you the thing. In Christianity, you go into church, you accept Jesus Christ in your heart, and, and they tell you exactly what that means. Right. right? right. You, you don't have an option to deviate from what they tell you the process is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But what, what we're doing right now and what you're saying, and I really want to, I, I, I appreciate you. Um, Jared, in, in saying that, is that you followed him, you're understanding that you're, you're questioning these things, and that's a genius thing to do. You should question yeah. it. Jesus yeah. told you to. Yeah, question that. But the reality is, is that the man Joshua, the man Derek, all of us, we're just speaking these things as we say them. You don't accept them as truth until they become true inside of you. This is where people have sacrificed their victims to somebody else. No, you're not a victim. You've made the choices of belief that you've made. Yep, sure you have. You made them. You made them. You decided, and you get to decide whether you're not going to believe in them anymore. You decide and the world in which you want to live in. All of it. All, it, all of it. So you decide whether you're going to live in the kingdom of the Father, yeah. Or you decide whether you're going to live in the kingdom of the God of this world who loves blood, lust, sacrifice, and that whole thing keeps going. Just look at your government today. That is the God of this world. You want to continue this? Keep doing it. Stay here. You want to stay here? Then you subscribe to it. And that's the difference. When you, The narrow gate is very simple. People are, oh my God, where am I going to go when I die? Hmm. Well, who do you subscribe to when you were here? Do yeah. you like this world? Do you love the God of this world? Or are you ready to leave? Yeah. Dump it all. Dump it all. Dump it all. It's not yours. And then you can go home. But if you're going to stick around and you're going to fret about the debt systems and everything that happened in this bullshit world, well, guess what? You're going to stay here forever. You're never leaving here. So this is hell. This is weeping and gnashing of teeth, if you didn't notice. Mm -hmm. Yep. Do you want to stay in hell or you would like to leave? That's my question for everybody. Do no, you want to stay I'd, here I'd, in hell I'd, or I'd do you want to go? Like, I'd like to change it. Yeah, well, we can. I, I'd like to change it. I mean, I, I see can. like Revelation as this geoengineered thing. And then I see a whole bunch of people saying, oh, well, it's okay that the world is like fucking up because we're going to go to this next place and it's okay. So that's a part of the plan. 
like it it it's not okay to say okay fine it's part of the plan if we are have Christ in us and we can change the plan and we are the ones that need to change it then it's not okay to say well screw this place it's the next world no we've been given this place this is a gift I need to make a raise beds in my garden and grow some veggies and raise my kids the best way that I can so that I can have little pieces of heaven today and I'm really questioning myself yeah, but you when I'm you this. you make this what it is today I'm worried about you. about how 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 badly people have been manipulated into the fact that it's okay that the shit's happening to us. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> we have decided this as a whole. As a conscious whole, we have decided yeah. the world in which we want to live in. Yeah. We we made this world and yeah. we get to make the next one. Yep, exactly. So let's start making it. It's 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 amazing because the thing is in the Bible it says let us make man after our image okay God said this so if we have been united back to the Garden of Eden the uniting between the flesh and the middle wall partition being broken down we have all access and power now the tongue gives life and it can give death therefore we can make the world in which we want to live in it's just that as a collective whole in consciousness people need to wake up they need to, because if they don't, they're going to stay under this religious bullshit doctrine. And the truth is this, is that now you're talking, brother, bullshit doctrine. There you go. Now Joshua's talking, brother. <laughs> and and the, the thing is, at the end of the day, when it comes down to it, as a collective consciousness and whole, we deserve everything we're getting. Honestly, 100 percent, brother. One. Look, I said there's going to be hell to pay and hell collects. Yeah. Okay. If yeah. we in the United States of America, as things are revealed, you just wait at how much is, is revealed about what the United States has done and what we have supported as a people of the United mm -hmm. States, you better repent. You better beg for forgiveness because hell is going to come and collect. Yeah. Just get your houses in order. That's get all. Get your house in order. That's it. It's like, let it pass. You want to know what Passover is? That you you repented. Then they'll pass over you. Otherwise, they're coming for you. All of them. The whole world. You supported the country, the United States of America. If you have any idea what they have done in the name of what they owe in the Americans' interest. Shit. Guys, Derek, what? Derek knows what he's talking about. <laughs> you should Watch. Do. You better yeah. you better get away from this country. Get away from the United States and what it has done. Because it's coming for you. They will hold you personally accountable. Yeah. All of them. Yeah. Absolutely. And believe me, man, this country has done shit you don't understand. Yeah. I, so just get away from her. Get out of her, my people. Yeah. Get out of her. Who is her? Ishtar. Who is her? The Statue of Liberty. Who is her? I don't know. The United States is referred to her. Why? Yeah. Watch. Get away from her, folks. Leave as fast as you. It doesn't mean you got to leave the country. But leave in your heart. Guys, the thing about it is, is that we need to, we need to wake up. We got to stop listening to these scholars that think they know something. I'm telling you what, they've been indoctrinated by seminary schools, social, yeah, uh, the, the media, mean. mainstream media, everything. It's all ran by the elite. Okay. And when you stop supporting Futurist books, when you stop listening to David, Jeremiah, different ones that tell you a pre-tribulation rapture is going to come and save you before everything, you're putting your hope in that man. You're not putting your hope in God. That's the problem here. You're not going to be ready. Yeah, your, your hope in God is, look, if your hope in God is outside of you, you're in trouble. Because the Father lives inside of you. There is no other. Look, Christ was very clear to let you know that the coming of the kingdom does not happen in a way that you can observe. Did he not say that? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so if it comes in a way that you cannot observe, obviously it's not physical. Yeah. 
So the kingdom of heaven comes to you. Accept the kingdom of heaven. Accept Christ in you. Sit at the other side. Merge the right and the left and be one with the Father. And then get done. It's over for this governmental world. It's over as long as you all do it. But you better stand in it. So I'm going to jump off here. Joshua, I just want to tell you I love you. But seriously, I just want to encourage everybody. I mean, you need to understand that this is a whole, a whole different kind of war. It doesn't mean you're battling and you're bringing blood. You don't ever bring blood. You don't ever, ever, ever bring blood. Let them bring the blood. Yeah. It's not yours to bring. Right, right. Let them bring it. Let them kill you. Let them bring the blood. They will kill you and think they're doing the work of God. Listen to what Christ said. You are living in his days, and I cannot express to you enough. I don't give a shit what anybody taught you about Jesus. Listen to his words. Walk in them and understand that you are him right now. You are him. And if you think differently, then you are the Antichrist. Yeah. Love you guys. Love you, brother. Bless you, man. You have yourself a good one, all right? I will, brother. Love you much. And everybody, thank yeah. you for just at least hearing me. And Joshua, folks, I'm telling you right now, follow this young man. His heart is true. His heart is pure. He's seeking diligently. And I mean fucking diligently. And I love him with all I've got. All right? I love you, Joe. Love you, brother. Love you, Derek. Bless you, man. All right, brother. All right, guys. So, um, yeah, Todd, the thing is, man, you can't, you can't live for the things of the world because when you live for the things of the world, you're supplying your flesh and you're taking away from your spirit, man. That's why Jesus said the kingdom of God is within you. Okay. So we have to understand that. Um, I'm trying to get some more people in here that may not agree about Jesus returning in 70 AD. Um, but I am. A little I, bit I don't agree with him returning in 70 AD, so I could maybe give you some backlash there. I, I, I don't maybe think like he came in the first place. I, I, like there's Egyptian myth. There's stories that just happened so far before that. And when it comes to the, the story of Christ, I'm, I'm a, a believer in truth. I mean, I know that in my heart. Right. But there's so much to the story that I don't even know if it was the same person. I think maybe that some person came around, like, you know how the world looks at people like Mahatma Gandhi or whatever, and they say, like, wow, those people were close to God. Mm -hmm. um, and then there were these prophets. Like, there was this dude that did that. He He attained this certain level and then they used his story to create a story that would enslave people into worshiping that bloodthirsty god right right like right. so I, I agree with you in terms of him not returning and that it's our responsibility and then i also degree disagree in the fact that he was even there in the first place <laughs> Okay, all right. I, I, I see what you're saying here. Well, the thing is, is that when it comes down to it, um, yeah, like Chris said, Reconstructing Christian, there were archetypes of Christ, but they were not like Christ. They had, like Buddha, Buddha is talked about in the Bible, whether you guys realize it or not. In Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 3, yeah. it talks, and Buddha was actually an Israelite. Uh, Glenn Kimball makes a really, really good case for that, if you guys ever want to check that out. But, um, it, it, even the fact that when we look at it as a whole, when we go back to Egypt, a lot of the Egyptian stuff, Christianity originated from Egyptian culture. I mean, we have the, the Tempest Stella. We have uh, the volcanic eruption of Thera that happened during the Exodus. We got a lot of this stuff going on. And um, history does repeat itself in a sense. But the truth at the end of the day is that according to the Gospels, when Jesus came, when he did what he said he was going to do, 
according to those writings, that would have been when he would have returned, because he would return to that generation. But here's the thing. If he did return, that means we have all power and access now in heaven and on earth. Okay. But through the elite's plan to do all this geoengineer it, they're actually waking the masses up more and more. Look at what the pandemic did, for instance. That woke a lot yeah. of people up. So they're screwing themselves over at the end of the day, when you really think about it. So. Yeah, I hear you. It's, it, they are... And at the same time, I think I think in our circles, I, I see my circles and the people that I follow and stuff, and I think that everyone knows the stuff that we know, but there's still masses. I mean, 99% of the people aren't even close to what we're talking about. I mean, when people go towards Christianity to say, I want to fight the enemy, and I came to Christianity through realizing that there was an enemy, because I mean, I came from a secular home, new agey sort of stuff, mom did Reiki, and then realized like, wait, there is an enemy to fight. There is bad stuff going on in the world. And I was like, okay, well, where's the good team? And I found Christianity and I was like, okay, well, that must be the good team. And then I was like, okay, wait, that good team got set up just kind of like the same way the, the right and left got set up in America where you vote either side and it ends up going to the same place mm -hmm. um, because it's the same God. They they wanted you to worship the same the same God. And then it's like, okay, well, if that wasn't true, how much of the rest of the story is true? So where do you where do you draw the line? Where do you find out what is what is the truth? I suppose we're all on that journey and yeah, I'm super stoked to be on that journey with everyone together. But yeah, trying to figure oh, it dude, out. It's it's been pretty pretty crazy. Um you you know I have series on YouTube. I I know you know about that. Um Yeah, I watched it. Here, here in the next couple of months, I plan on revealing a uh, uh, a series on Egypt, how Egypt has ties with Christianity, and yeah. how how there's a lot of stuff in the Old Testament that if we go through multiple scholars, uh, uh, not scholars, um, Egyptian historian like Manetho, the Tempest Stella, um, the writings of Josephus different things going on here, uh, different Egyptian books that predated even uh, Christianity and everything. There's a lot of stuff here that we don't realize. But if it is true, and there is truth behind it, I've created a timeline as well to line up the patriarchs with the Hyksos pharaohs, and it lines up perfectly. There's been an Egyptologist named David Raul, and he actually shot the modern-day uh, Egyptian and Israelite chronology 300 years back, and it lines up perfectly with the Exodus and everything that was going on. So there's things that they are lying to us about, and we have to, to, we have to see this, because once we're going to see it, we're going to see that, wait a minute, this is nothing new, and we do have power in this world. Matter of fact, I'm not going to get too far into this right now, but I believe this even goes into manifesting. All right. Um, and that's really important as well, I believe, to all this, because we were created in the mind of God. So I'm not going to get into all that right now. But um, it's it's pretty crazy, needless to say. So yeah, you guys. Um, anyways, that uh, that debate I did earlier with that guy, that talk, that drained me honestly. Is there anyone else in here that doesn't quite un understand it about I don't know seventy A.D. or whatever the case may be? By the way, if any of you guys follow a man named Dakala Day, his name's Ryan. He's actually, uh, he used to live in Alaska. I guess he lives in Texas now or something. And um, he used to be known as Dead Hidden. Tell him to unblock me. There's a reason why he blocked me. Okay. And 
he didn't like it because a couple of years ago we had a debate on the end times. And I'm telling you what right now, he doesn't like when I get in his business because his account is growing and he is feeding you guys lies. I'm telling you this right now. You see, what they feed off of is your fear. And this is how people get views through fear. Okay? They get views through your fear. If the fear tactics stop, what ends up happening? We no longer live in a state of fear, a lower frequency, a lower consciousness, and we start living in a higher consciousness where perfect love casteth out all fear. Okay? No, here's, here, here's the thing about JK. You said, I don't think he feels that he's feeding us lies. If he studied as much as he said he does, he would understand preterism. You see, I can't hold it against some people for not understanding it, and that's fine. But when you understand the metaphors of the Old Testament scriptures and line that up with the metaphors and the allegories of the New Testament, because these were captivities, these were, these were judgments that came upon the world of the Israelites and not our world, then you will begin to understand those things. Well, JK, the, the, maybe he's not there yet. Maybe he doesn't study as much as he says he does. But the fact is this. If you get on this app and you're teaching stuff, you better be sure on what you are teaching. And the closer you get to the truth, this is one thing I found, the closer you get to the truth, the more you're going to be called a heretic. It's going to happen. You're going to live off of those fears. Okay? So here's, here's the thing about it. When it comes to it, you guys, we do not have to live in fear. We do not have to live in that anxiety. We can realize what the elite are trying to pull over our eyes, this wool that they are trying to pull over our eyes. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. He is somewhat knowledgeable. No, he's knowledgeable. But the thing is, even with our debate a couple of years ago, I wish I still had it. He was using speculation to say, you know, what about the Roman Catholic Church? What about these things? There's a lot of speculation on a futurist part. But when a preterist, someone that says these are past events, they use the Bible to justify everything that they say. This is the problem here. And sometimes it's because people aren't well learned enough to be teaching these things at the end of the day. But I will tell you guys this much right now. I will never lie to you, and I will always tell you to go back to the scriptures to look at it yourself. Because when Jesus says these things, you cannot separate Matthew chapter 23 when he's talking about Jerusalem from Matthew chapter 24. You cannot separate these things because when it comes into a perfect alignment, it all aligns perfectly. And there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Bless you, Josh. Thank you, brother. Thank you for everything. If there's anyone in here that doesn't quite understand it, they don't quite get it, maybe they just they just view it as a different uh, type of thing that's going on, that Jesus is going to return. Please get in the box and we'll talk. So I think that's very important. Okay. No, my God is not a murderer. All right. Jesus made it clear in John 8, 44, that your father is the devil. All right. The lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning. He abode not in the truth. Okay. I'm talking about the live box as it is. No, my God is not a murderer because my God is not Yahweh. My God is not the God of the Old Testament. Jesus even said in John chapter 17, Father, I thank you for making me revealed, bringing me before and, and revealing me unto my disciples that they would know who you are, Father. Because they never knew him. The Israelites never knew him. The Israelites never knew the true God. They knew glimpses of him. And this is why Jesus said, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He never said, I am the God of Moses. Okay. And here's the thing about it. When you look at it, when you bring all the things together, there's a reason why he wasn't a part of that because Jesus was a ransom for many to free us from the law because those who were in the law were held under captivity. Okay. Which is very important to understand because when they are held under captivity, 
there's something else going on. Christopher, I, I know what you're bringing up right here, okay? What you are bringing up is this. You see, Jesus was a ransom, and I'll, I'll tell you why you're wrong on this, all right? Because you want to use uh, Luke chapter 16 about, about the, um, the parable of Lazarus being sent to hell, okay? Or the rich man being sent to hell and Lazarus being put on the gulf, all right? So what ends up happening is this. Jesus makes it clear, but by the way, Daniel was not a worshiper of Yahweh. He was a worshiper of El. It's in his name, Daniel, or El, El Elyon. It's different, all right? Now, what happens is, yeah, Lazarus is Osiris, okay? What happened was, is Jesus being a ransom for many was held under the law to free us from the law. Therefore, in his flesh, he was bound to the law. But his spirit man belonged to someone else. This is why when he was up on the cross, he said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Because his flesh died on the cross, which was only a representation of the flesh dying under the law. But his spirit man did not die because his spirit went back to his father, which was El Elyon. The higher deity. You remember in Hebrews chapter 7 where it talks about the law of a carnal commandment? Carnality comes from the beast. Carnality comes from the flesh. That is the Levitical priesthood. That is under the law of Moses. Whereas the Melchizedek order is the power of an endless life. The endless life comes from the spirit man. That's why the spirit went back to the father when he was on the cross. Okay? No, he said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. All right. He said, today I will be with you in paradise to the thief on the cross. OK. Exactly. Yahweh God is flesh, not a spirit. And the same can be all for us. Yes, that's why it said he came in the image of sinful flesh in Israel, like a Jew, because in the flesh he was bound to the law. But in his spirit, man, he was going to rise and ascend above the law. Matter of fact, he defeated Yahweh at his own law. He defeated him at his own game. You see, to Yahweh, when someone falls the law, when you're guilty in one part, you're guilty of all. All right? Jesus wasn't guilty of any of it. He fulfilled it perfectly. And he, when he was the ransom, he freed us from the law. What's a ransom? What's a ransom, you guys? A ransom is a thievery note. It's being kidnapped against your will. It's a thief taking something. And Jesus was the ransom so that he would free us from the thief. The thief cometh not before to steal, kill, and to destroy. But I have come that they might have life and life more abundantly. Who stealed, killed, and destroyed? Who plundered in the Exodus? Who took the silver and gold from the Egyptians, killing them, slaying them? Who destroyed the Amalekites, every man, woman, and child? Who destroys, who kills, and who gives life? It's two separate stories, you guys. It's two separate things going on here. Exactly. <clears throat> That's not right? You tell me why it's not right, all right? I just gave you John 10.10. 10. Go read it again and go look at it. You shall know a tree by its fruit. All right? Yeah, El Elyon is God. He is the Father. You see, Deuteronomy 32, verse 8 and 9, says that the Most High uh, gave an inheritance to all the angels of God, and Yahweh's inheritance was Jacob. Okay? So in order to gain an inheritance, you cannot be the Most High. You are under some other deity, which would be the Most High. So Yahweh was not the Most High. He was a deity that was under the Most High because he gained an inheritance. An inheritance cannot be, like, have, it has to be given, okay? So what ended up happening is, within this, what we begin to see is this understanding that the Most High, El Elyon, is who Jesus was actually a part of. He actually worshipped this deity because the Melchizedek order even comes from the Canaanites. 
Josephus even talks about that, how Melchizedek was a Canaanite chief. All right. So this is important to understand. And once you understand it, you start to realize, you start to wake up to the truth of what's really going on here, that the reason why there's all the bloodshed, the murder, the killing, the rape, the torture, the human sacrifice, dashing children's heads against rocks, taking virgins, gold and silver, all these things in the Old Testament, the reason for all this is because this was the God of this world who had the inheritance of Jacob or Israel. This is why they went into the land killed, plundered, killed the children, killed the cattle, killed the men, killed the women, did all these things because it was under the law of Moses. Okay? This was Yahweh. This is who Jesus told the Pharisees was their father, the devil. He said, I am from above, you are from beneath. Why did he say that? Because what he was trying to show them... AJ despised. What's going on, man? How you doing? What's up? <clears throat> uh, that's interesting. All right. Um, yeah, guys, there's there's a lot of stuff going on, needless to say, um, with all of this. All right? Yes, Horned Moses. It's, uh, it's very important. What's going on, man? How you doing? I think it was playing some Frank Sinatra or something. Um, when you start to look at this, when you start to bring it all together, you start to see the separation between the deities. Okay? You start to see the difference. So when it comes to El Elyon, I believe he is the most high. This is the highest deity. This is the one that dwells in unapproachable light. You see, Yahweh came down in thick clouds of darkness on Mount Sinai, whereas the New Testament tells us that God dwells in unapproachable light. So there's something going on here, okay? No, Ken, Jesus isn't coming back very soon. You have all power and authority in heaven and on earth. If you want to jump in, you, you like to come in here and talk a lot. I noticed this. Why don't you jump into the live and then we'll talk, all right? Let's go ahead and talk, all right? Because this is important. You see, the thing is people need to wake up to this and they need to realize we have all power in heaven and on earth to bring heaven to earth. Like Chris from Reconstructing Christianity said, if people stop talking about the end of the world and they start realizing the world has a future, we'll have hope, okay? But until you guys start, stop speaking your doomsday speech, all of these things going on, then we're really going to suffer through this, okay? We can bring heaven to earth by actually realizing that the kingdom of God is within us. When we stop funding the elite, you know, David Jeremiah, John Hagee, Jonathan, John MacArthur, all these people, I'll tell you guys straight up, they're funded by the elite. You may not believe it, but they are funded by the elite, okay? Thanks, great one. Bless you, man. You have yourself a good night, all right? I'm about to jump up off here, here shortly. What about the 200 million man army? Well, you can't separate that from Revelation 9. You know what Revelation 9 is about? It's about the locust army, all right? Who are the locusts? Are they supposed to be some big giant alien things that are going to come out of a pit? Oh, God. It's just crazy. Yeah, absolutely. The elite is funded by Yahweh. They're, it's, it's just crazy. It really is. Amanda Martin. The thing is this. Yeah, by leaving the flesh behind, we're going into a new world. But it's not that it ever left. We could have had this 500 years ago if we wanted to. We could have had this 1,000 years ago if we wanted to. If people would actually read their Bibles and stop believing all the bullshit that comes out of their pastor's mouth. Instead of them just warming up the church pews on Sunday and going to read the Bible for themselves. And I'm not talking about scanning the Bible. I'm talking about reading from Genesis to Revelation. I'm talking about understanding the metaphors of the Bible in the Old Testament to understand what Bible in the book of Revelation is talking about. I'm not talking about you sitting there saying, oh yeah, I read the Bible for a couple of years. 
Oh, I've read it a couple of years. I can care how long you've read it for a couple of years. What I care about and what you should care about is knowing that Bible and not wanting to be deceived. How badly do you want to not be deceived? How badly do you want to understand these things? And how badly do you want eternal life? How badly do you want to understand these things? How badly do you want to understand the limits beyond our creation? Understand the universe. Because guess what? It has nothing to do with Jesus coming back now. It has everything to do with you realizing that you are the light of the world. It has everything to do about your personal relationship with Jesus and digging into the Bible. It has everything to do with who you realize who you are and the impact you're making in the world. That's what it has to do with. You see, people can jump up in here and talk about two to three minute videos every single day if they want, but we're never going to get to the meat of the story if we don't do these lives, if we don't talk about these things. And the truth is this. That even like one of the people USA, those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart and they defile the man. It's not about what's from the outside. It's about what's from within you. It's what's within you that corrupts a man. We are the light of the world. A, a light that is set upon a hilltop cannot be hid. That's not what I'm saying, Morgan. You see, you're still thinking on a you're still thinking on a religious frequency. Get out of that. Get out of that. Do you know that Jesus said ye are gods and the scriptures cannot be broken? Do you know what that means if Jesus is the head and we are the body? You know, it's said that the foot cannot move without the head or the head cannot move without the foot. So, in the concept of anatomy, when my shoulder moves, what happens is my arm moves. When my arm moves, my forearm moves. When my forearm moves, my hand moves. When my hand moves, my fingers move. So it's all a part of a body. It's all a part of a system. Jesus is the cornerstone. And he is the head and we are the body. Therefore, we are a part of Christ. I'm not wrong. Tell me how I'm wrong, okay? I'll use the Bible to justify every single thing that I have to say. I will never tell you something else that's contrary to what the Bible has to say. The Bible is the Rosetta Stone for us to understand the truth. Is there lying pens of scribes? Absolutely. But at the end of the day, we are all one. Do you know what the first century thought was of when it said, let us make man in our image? It was actually talking about not how God was a character and body, or he had a body. It was the mind. It was the universal mind. God gave us a mind that would be on the capacities of thinking like him. That's why he said, let us make man in our image. Because we receive the universal mind. And when we receive the universal mind, the Bible tells us, let the same mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So if the same mind which was in Christ Jesus was him saying that he was God incarnated into the flesh, and he is the head and we are the body, we are connected to the head, therefore we are the makeup of Christ. And therefore we can bring heaven to earth. We are made in the image of God. That was the first century mindset, a collective consciousness. We are all sparks of God because we are the makeup of that creation. And like Ezekiel 36 says that when the clean water was sprinkled upon us through the new covenant, the Garden of Eden would come back into fruition. And when the Garden of Eden was to come back into fruition, this was the breaking down of flesh and spirit, the middle wall partition, so that the spirit man could rise up in us and realize that we have everything within us. The kingdom within. The kingdom within. So I guess it's heretical to believe that let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Philippians 2.5.
understand this. Here's the thing. No, it was our flesh. Do you know what the story of the Garden of Eden is actually about? It's an esoteric revelation about us taking forth from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. To partake in knowledge through good and bad experiences that would bring us unto Christ. But that's what happens when you are in the flesh. You have to go through good and bad experiences to realize the truth that is in Christ. Does that sound familiar? That's the law. That's why the law was given first before Christ could come. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil was the law, and the tree of life is Christ. That's the new covenant. It's the partaking of us in this human experience to realize that we must go through much tribulation in order to inherit the kingdom of God. We and No, I'm not Ryan Foley's older brother. Matter of fact, Ryan Foley, he's he's very immature in his beliefs. He sells meat. He sells milk, okay? Ryan Foley talks about a lot of different things, all right? Let's put it this way. I'm trying to help you wake up, all right? We will get there one day, but we got to stop thinking in a religious mindset and come into a spiritual and revolutionary mindset of being in a relationship with Christ. Guys, we need to realize we have to have the same mind as Christ because it's the universal mind that was given in Genesis chapter 1 that we are the makeup of. All right? Therefore, what your tongue speaks can give life and it can give death. What are you going to speak? Are you going to speak life or are you going to speak death? Are you going to speak power into your life? Or are you going to speak persecution, evil? into your life because God has given us the keys. He has given us the keys. Absolutely. The kingdoms of this world, the kingdom within, that's not taught in churches. It's always been taught that it's somewhere else. Okay. That's very important because it is taught somewhere else. It's taught in Egypt. The Egyptian Proverbs talks about it before Jesus even spoke it. Yeah. Go ask Inspiring Philosophy or Dan McClellan that one. Go see if they're honest about that one. All right? There's scholars here on TikTok that think they know something. But I guarantee if they got in alive with me, let's put it this way. At the end of the day, they, they come from seminary. It's not their fault. It's not their fault that they come from seminary. It's not their fault that they're taught from an orthodox faith or whatever you want to call it. It's not their fault that they can't use their own mind to think outside the limits of the capabilities of what scholars and traditions of men tell them. It's not their fault that the Bible says, well, this is their fault, that the Bible tells you that the Holy Spirit will be your teacher. That is their fault. All right. The pyramid? What do I mean what, what I think the pyramid is? The pyramid of Giza. The pyramid, okay, th this could get into Egyptian territory. This could be talking about the Phoenicians, which was actually a representation of the Phoenix, which the Phoenix was actually at the Temple of Heliopolis. The Temple of Heliopolis is talked about in the Bible, whether you realize it or not. Yeah, it sure is. Go to Genesis chapter 41, verse 45, when Joseph marries into the family of a priest of the temple of Anu, or On, which actually in the Septuagint registers to the temple of Heliopolis. This is important because when you start to look at it and you bring it all together, you start to realize this is about esoteric mysteries of the kingdom of God within you. All right? Yes, I, I have longer form content. I actually have playlists on YouTube. I have a playlist called The Bloodthirsty God of the Old Testament and The Veil That Separates. Orthodoxology, I see you're in here. Go, go ahead and come in, in, man. Come on in. I just invited you. Yes. Yes. Missy, thank you for putting that in the comments. Yeah, it's uh, Sons of God Ministries. 
on YouTube. There's playlists on there um, where I'm not talking like this. I'm actually going through content with you guys. I'm going to be making a new playlist probably here in a couple of months um, on Egypt as it is. And this is going to be very important because Christianity goes back to Egyptian origins, whether you realize it or not. To even believe that Jesus Christ is God incarnated into the flesh, that's not a Jewish idea. You see, to the Jews, a Messiah was a man that would be born of woman and man. He would come in, he would overthrow the Romans, he would reign and rule as a king. That is the Messianic Jewish expectation. What's the expectation of Christianity? That Jesus was God incarnated into the flesh. Guess what, you guys? That's pagan. That's a pagan idea. So if you believe that Jesus Christ is God incarnated into the flesh, you are a pagan. You don't realize it. Because paganism, by Christianity, the kingdom of God being within you, goes all the way back to Egypt and even the Sumerian tablets. And it all stems from here. Because it's always been about the creation being within you. Okay? It's very important. <laughs> yeah. Well. Genesis 1.1 1, 1 and John 1.1. 1, 1. Genesis 1.1, 1, 1, when it says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. That word create is the word bara. It means to speak it into existence. This is why it says in John 1.1, 1, 1, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Because the word was in the beginning. The word to speak forth. Why do you think it says in the book of James that the tongue can give life and it can give death? It's talking about being spoken into existence. It doesn't have to be created with hands because God doesn't have human hands. Actually, at that point, he didn't. He was a universal mind. This is why Jesus says of the Samaritan woman, God is a spirit. And they that worship him, worship him in spirit and in truth. Because God was consciousness. And God, in the form of Jesus, was that consciousness, that pure light placed into a man. Because he was God incarnated into the flesh. He was the perfect one. All divine, all human. A pagan idea. No, it doesn't. John 1.1 1, 1 does not say in the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. John 1.14 says, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Okay? Absolutely. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us. What word is that? Is that the word rhema? Is that talking about the Bible? Or is that talking about the word logos? There's a difference. You have the rhema and the logos. All right? Yeah, Josh, I, I know, man. It's... I'm trying to help people here. I really am, man. It scares them. Absolutely. It does. People do not want to jump in this box because they can run their mouth over my videos on comments but they will not come up here to talk. The reason why, they know they can spew a bunch of garbage in comments. They won't come up here to talk because they know they don't believe what they actually do and they're too scared to get out of their box that they're in. Okay? This is why, Amanda... We have to use scripture to back these things up. When we use scripture to back them up and we show that even the scriptures are about the kingdom of God being within, how they are fulfilled, how everything that's being played out before our eyes is all geoengineered from World War I, World War II, um, even what they're doing over in Ukraine with Russia. Yeah, that, that was a plan back in 2017. Did you guys know that? There's literally some documents that talk about how they were going to bomb the crap out of Ukraine so they can make way for something called the New Jerusalem Project. That's actually on my YouTube. 
I have a series on there called the Geoengineered Revelation Prophecies and the Controversies of Zion. And I try to show you how they were fulfilled in the Bible and then how they're trying to fulfill it today. Okay? Yeah. Crazy, crazy. I'm scared, Draco Galaxy. <laughs> you think I'm scared? Perfect love cast without all fear, man. I'm not scared of anything. What what would I be scared of? What would I be scared of? Hebrews chapter 1, verse 8. What does Hebrews chapter 1, verse 8 say? But unto the Son he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Absolutely, you're right. What's the scepter? What's the righteousness? Was this a messianic psalm that was given way back in the book of Genesis, under the blessings that Jacob gave to his sons. Absolutely. This was a blessing that was given to Judah. Okay? This blessing of Jesus reigning and ruling on the throne of David was actually talking about the kingdom that would last forever. Okay? But they didn't understand it. They didn't understand that the Gentiles were going to come into this covenant. They didn't understand that Jesus Christ Christ incarnated into the flesh, the Messiah, the true Messiah, was actually going to be a universal Savior. Draco Galaxy, get another 850 followers and we'll talk, all right? That's all I have to say. It's amazing to me. Amazing, amazing. Jesus is God to me, absolutely. Yeah, son, absolutely, Christopher, you are absolutely right. Why do you think they're called the 12 apostles and the Son of God? Did you know that before the revision happened in the Old Testament about the, uh, the, the chest plate of, the, of the, um, the high priest with the 12 stones, that was not tw talking about just the 12 sons of Israel. Actually, matter of fact, the Josephus, who was a first century historian, he says that was talking about the 12 zodiacs of the astrological wheel. He was talking about how the Urim and Thummim was a representation of the sun and the moon. It all has to do with astrotheology. You're absolutely right there, okay? But here's the thing. Just because it has to do with the sun, the moon, and the stars, and all of creation, does it make it a bad thing? After all, we are a part of this creation. It's just that Jesus Christ and his disciples, they were the oracles of God. They were manifested into reality. Okay. So here's the thing. At the end of the day, yeah, absolutely. It all comes from Greek mythology. It all comes from the Egyptians. It all comes from the Sumerian tombs. But guess what? If you believe Jesus Christ is God incarnated into the flesh, you believe in all that because you are a pagan. It was all pointing to Jesus. You can't believe that Jesus is God and not be a pagan. That's the problem here. Okay? Oh, goodness. All right. Let's see. Let's see. John 6.56 verses Leviticus 17.10. How can Jesus be the word of God and disobey the commandments of God? He didn't disobey the commandments of God. He didn't disobey the commandments of God. Matter of fact, he followed the commandments of God because in the flesh he had to follow the commandments of God so that he could, he could actually free you from the law, from the law of Yahweh in his flesh because the Levitical priesthood was the law of the carnal commandment so that you could live into the spirit. Okay? All right. This is very important to understand. All right. Jesus is God. That's all there is to it. Christopher, Jesus even said in John 10:34 that ye are gods and the scriptures cannot be broken. Why do you say that to the religious leaders? Because 
They were, they were accusing him of being the son of God. And then he brings up that verse to them to show them that in their own scriptures, he said, in your own scriptures, it says that ye are gods and the scriptures cannot be broken. He was showing them that their own scriptures actually contradicted what they were trying to say. Jesus has the name above all names, absolutely. And that's above the name of Yahweh. Why? Because he's the most high. Jesus is the most high. The name above all names? Think about that. A name above all names. Yahweh was given an inheritance according to Deuteronomy 32, verse 8 and 9. Therefore, if Yahweh was given an inheritance by the most high, that means he couldn't be the most high. No, Jesus doesn't contradict his own scriptures, Christopher. You just don't know how to read them. That's your problem here. You can give me any scriptures that you so well please, and I will go ahead and try to help you here. Okay? There are no scriptures that contradicts what he says. All right? So anyways, what happens is, is that Jesus is the name above all names because he's the most high. Do you not know in Genesis chapter 14 when Melchizedek came unto Abram, not Abraham, Abram, Abraham was the one who made a covenant with Yahweh. Abram was an uncircumcised Chaldean from the land of Ur. When he made the covenant with Melchizedek, who was a worshiper of the Most High, not Yahweh, the Most High, he didn't ask for animal sacrifice. He gave him bread and wine. Why bread and wine? Because it was a representation of the body and the blood of Jesus. All right? Yeah, exactly, Ashley. He was like, you want to be mad that I'm a god? Well, guess what? So are you. You just have to wake up to your capability. You see, th this is the thing about it. This is why it says in the beginning, let us make man in our own image, okay? It wasn't according to the image of the body, the flesh. It was the universal mind. Let this same mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. I truly believe that as we move through society and we rise ourselves in this consciousness to realize that the world's not going to end and it's going to keep on going, we're going to have a beautiful world. It's going to be amazing because the world that we're going to live in is going to be a representation of humanity. It's going, it's, but we reap what we sow. That's the problem here. Exactly. Jesus is not coming back because he is already here. He has heard the cries. Ryan Foley is not my brother, no. I know who you're talking about. He's a very... Uh, I used to be like Ryan Foley, if any of you know Ryan Foley. He's probably about a year or two into being saved, evangelizing, and doing all that. I used to do that stuff, all right? I used to pray for people I, I, I've seen some stuff and everything. I can't deny it with my own eyes. I've lost friends because of the doctrine I have gone into. But the thing is, is that he's very radical. And I believe that as he keeps on studying, he will grow into being more mature and not being so radical. In a sense, what I mean by that is um, so condemning, in other words. All right. There's a doctrine that you won't hear. That's all there is to it. What's going on, Joseph? How are you? Absolutely, Matthew 22, 29, 30, and 31, when Jesus says, you do err for not knowing the scriptures. Why didn't they know the scriptures? How did they not know the scriptures? You see, Nicodemus, who was a teacher of all of Israel, didn't even know the scriptures, and he thought he knew the scriptures. Why do I say this? Because Jesus said, unless a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. What did Nicodemus think he had to do? He thought he had to go back into his mother's womb a second time. What did Jesus say? Nicodemus, you're a teacher of all of Israel, and you don't know what it means to be born again? 
How can I teach you of heavenly things if you don't even believe earthly things, Nicodemus? They erred in the scriptures because they didn't realize the esoteric meanings behind the scriptures. They didn't realize that the kingdom of God was within. They didn't realize these things and they made it physical. They perished for a lack of knowledge. Good night, Joshua. Bless you, man. Love you, brother. Reconstructing Christianity. Welcome to the new reformation. Absolutely, brother. We got to bring the truth, man. We have to, we have to wake the people up. All right. First Enoch chapter 15, verse seven. I'd love to hear this, honestly. Um, but here, here's the thing. The scriptures just in general are talking about a deeper meaning behind the scriptures. Okay. Yes. Looking with physical eyes only equals death. All right. I used to I used to believe in the serpent seed doctrine, plain zenith. I don't believe in the serpent seed doctrine. Um, I used to follow that doctrine. I used to uh, I didn't so much teach that doctrine, but it it's spiritual. It's a spiritual kingdom. It's not about flesh. In other words, there's there's more to this than I think we're getting. Great live. Thanks for keeping keeping thinking. Absolutely, brother. Bless you, Adirondack. Adirondack, life. You say Jesus is not coming back, so what happens when we die? Well, that depends on you. Are you going to come back to this world? Are you going to be reincarnated? Yeah, reincarnation is real. I truly believe that because Jesus said that you shall not escape this place until you have paid the last penny. Why did they say in Matthew 16 to Jesus after he said, who do you think I am? Who do the people say that I am? They said, Jeremiah, one of the prophets, Isaiah, Ezekiel, Elijah. How could they sit there and say that he was one of those prophets if they were dead? Think about that. Think about that. Yes, Jesus is the head of the body and we are the body. Absolutely. That's not a doctrine of Jehovah Witnesses, man. No. The Jehovah Witnesses believe that they're the 144,000. And, well, they, they do believe hell is earth. Okay? Now, Jesus says that. He says, you're not going to pay the last penny until you have escaped this place. There's other places that you can see this. Okay? So here's, here's the thing. You don't want to be of the spirit of Elijah tail. I'm going to tell you why. Because in Luke chapter 9, when James and John just got out of the, um, the evangelization mission that they were in with the Samaritans, what ended up happening is they came back to Jesus and they said, Lord, let us call fire down on these people. Son of a gun, man. Um, let, let us call fire down on these people. This is what I'm going to do. I'll put this up. L let us call fire down on these people people and um, consume them. What did Jesus say? He rebuked James and John for wanting to call fire down. And he said, you guys don't know what spirit you are of. Why would he say that? Because they were in a spirit of error. Okay. They were in a spirit of destroying. What did Jesus say right after he said that you don't know what spirit you are of? He said, the son of man has not come to destroy men's lives. He has come to save men's lives. Yeah, think about that. Okay. Elijah was violent. Elijah was violent. Guys, I've been on here for over two hours, like two and a half hours, I'm going to say. That's what it says, man. I don't believe in any doctrine. 
all right? I don't believe in any doctrine. Matter of fact, what I believe in is that just study the scriptures. Realize that there's more to life than what we realize. There's a universe out there. If you're going to be caught up in just one belief and think that you can read the Bible and just understand it all and not understand archaeology, history, historians, all of these things, then you're not going to get the full picture. Okay. So here's the thing. When you start to look at this, you'll start to realize it. Mr. Super Cool, the Bible tells you, all right, Jesus is already here. He's here with us. Jesus said, it's better that I leave so that I can be with all of you at once. When did he come? He came on the day of Pentecost, all right? But what has ended up happening is we don't understand what is really going on. I'll read First Enoch 15.7. I'll read that, Christopher, and, and we could talk about it sometime. I'd like to check that out. I agree. It, it's simple. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No, Revelation said he was coming for the church of the first century. He mentions people by name in Revelation chapter 2 and 3. He's talking about seven churches that are located in Antioch near Turkey that were going under persecution in that very day. It's not about us. It was about the first century church. I agree, Christopher. I know what you're getting at. Thoughts on Gospel of Thomas. I believe out of the Nag Hammadi Library, that is the one book that I can actually look at, accept, understand. Um, reason why, a lot of it does entail what is said in the New Testament, if you actually read it. Guys, but anyways, I'm going to go ahead and jump up off here. I pray that everyone has enjoyed this live. I pray that this has helped. Um, I'm, I'm pretty tired right now. I, uh, I'm exhausted. That lot, that, uh, I don't want to say debate, but that talk with that guy earlier, really, oh man, that was, that, that was a lot, how he was trying to skip around on some stuff. He'll get it one of these days. He'll get it. We'll all get it. Just understand that Jesus's kingdom is not of this world. Please, if you get the chance, understand that the book of Revelation is based off of the Old Testament scriptures. Out of the 404 verses in the book of Revelation, 278 of them are allusions back to the Old Testament imagery of the scriptures. Okay? Guys, I'm going to go ahead and get off. I pray that this has helped you. I pray that this was a blessing. I will upload this on YouTube probably here in the next couple of days as it is. Um, I have a lot going on as it is, you guys. I, if, I, I'm if i sorry for not getting back to some of you guys. I've been, um, I've been really busy on studying about the Egyptians, like really busy. And, um, you know, Missy, you, you were asking me about compiling um, things together almost in like timelines. I created a timeline of Egypt how it aligns with the with the uh, the patriarchs eternal ruler i decided i'm not doing a book right now i can't do it right now reason why my my views are changing so rapidly on things i don't even have time to do it right now because i, I don't want to give something that's going to be dishonest to you guys i'd rather keep on studying at this point um I'm learning a couple of extra things as it is, but I can't write a book right now, especially since um, my views are changing so rapidly. Okay. I've read about Krishna, Mithra, Sargon of Akkad, and Dionysus. I know the Sargon of Akkad uh, myth about, um, about Moses, it being after Moses and everything. Well, it was before Moses, and they actually used that for Moses, and actually that ties into Osiris as well. 
Yeah, I, I, I understand, man. I know what they did with the Old Testament. Okay. Oh, man. Um, yeah, I, uh, I, I was about 50,000 words into it, into the book, but I can't write anymore because my views. All right. Um, yeah, no, I, I understand what they did with the Old Testament, Christopher. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. We'll we'll talk sometime, man. Um, I got some other views on some stuff as well. Um, I, I know you're well studied because even the verses you were quoting, it takes someone that has studied a lot to understand that. All right. So anyways, you guys have yourself a good night. I don't know why I'm blocked, but if any of you followed the call of day, Dead Hidden. His name's Dead Hidden. His name's Ryan here. He blocked me a while back. Tell him to unblock me, all right? Um, and I'm sure it would be a really fruitful life, Christopher, because I, I could tell you're well studied. Yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring a series forward on the Egyptians here very soon and show how it all entails a lot of stuff, especially with uh, Pharaoh and Jesus actually being of that bloodline of the Pharaohs, which is really interesting because a lot of people don't realize it, but there's a reason why in Matthew chapter 1, it says Jesus Christ comes from the lineage, the son of David, the son of Abraham, because a lot of people don't realize it. But Abraham was actually a very rich, wealthy man. And he was told to go to the south, the south to meet the Pharaoh. Well, guess what? An Asiatic king cannot go to the south to meet Pharaoh. Because an Asiatic king dwells in the west, the east. He does not dwell in the north. But someone that does dwell in the north, were the heights of those pharaohs. And Jesus, yes, was of the bloodline of the pharaohs. There's a reason why. So, we, we are all learning. We are all getting things together. But at the end of the day, you guys, um, I'm going to go ahead and jump out of here. I pray that this has helped you guys. Um, and we'll definitely talk soon as it is. And for the love of God, stay away from scholars that say that they know stuff because what they're going is they're going off of their bias where they, it's through seminary school. It has an agenda. Okay. There's a lot more stuff to this and we don't all know it yet. So bless you guys. I love you. You have yourself a good night. All right. Blessings.